Hey, funny friends, welcome to the Point of Difference Rugby League podcast. I'm your host, Dave, and today I've got a sensational guest on the show. We've got the one and only Mark Graham, the goat of rugby league in New Zealand, the greatest of all time. Mate, how are you going? Yeah, good, Dave. Yourself? Oh, mate, I'm fantastic. So great to have you on the show and to meet you. Um, what have you been up to, man? I hear you've got a bit of a Tiger Woods golf game going on at the moment. I don't think Tiger, Tiger Woods would uh, would claim to um, have taught me anything. I'm, I'm uh, I went and played this morning actually, Dave, and I was very bad, mate. I was I was hit him at right angles. It was um, it was a pretty ordinary display at best. Well, remember, it's not a slice; it's a fade. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So, um, so what have you been getting up to, sort of, in the last few years in your spare time? Um, well, I retired about four or five years ago, so um, I finally found a job I'm really, really good at um, being retired. So I just cruise around doing, doing what I like. I, uh, I've got a few interests. I like to train still, so I do a bit of training and I uh, um, I work around the house and do special projects. And you know, just I've got a, I've always liked dogs, so I've got uh, uh, at the moment I've got a great Dane, and his his uh, name's Abraham, and we walk and we uh, go to the golf course together. And yeah, we have our life's good. Awesome, man. Oh, happy for you. That's that sounds great. <laughs> we can we can I sign off for that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's it's really good. And, and I've got some good super working for me, so um, um, I don't um, I don't draw a pension, but I I draw an amount from the from the from the super fund, and it, um, yeah, life's good. Can't complain. My wife still works, and she likes to work, so um, it's great. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Oh, I'm happy to hear that you're happy. I love it. I love it. So uh, let's wind the clock back, man, all the way back to the beginning. Where did you grow up and what was life like for the young Mark Graham? Uh, born and bred in Adahu. I was born in the hospital up in, uh, uh, not far from the monument um, in Adahu. And um, the monument is a monument of, uh, it's, it's a, of a horseman, a cavalry man in the First World War up in Adahu. And that's where they had the Anzac ceremony. So um, I was born and bred around that area. and. Um, I lived in um, Hutton Street in Otahu, and then we moved to Tamak Avenue, 26. Um, Tamak Avenue in Otahu, which is just down the road from um, the monument, and um, went to school at St. Joseph's Convent, Catholic school, and my, all my family went there. And uh, I have uh, three older sisters, two older sisters and an older brother, and a younger sister. So, um, yeah, uh, that's, you know, we, we went to church on Sundays, and... Um, yep. Um, as as what you know in the old days, if you sat there alone, the old man battled you. Um, and that was <laughs> that's how it was. Yeah. That was life. Yeah. Nice man. So where did the the rugby league come in? Did, was that something you uh, did right from a young age, or was that something you sort of progressed into uh, later on? No, we, I um, we you know the, I think the um, the Idaho Rovers rugby league they supplied some football jerseys to uh, the convent, to Joseph's convent school. So I was playing. I don't know. I reckon I would have played. Um, Gee, from when I was pretty young, you know, maybe six or seven, maybe yeah, around around that mark. And um, so I always played rugby league basically. And then, um, you know, with all my mates, and I, you know, I still I played senior football with some of the guys I played um, rugby league with at, at common school. So um, it was you know, one of those things, I suppose. Awesome, man. So uh, so you stepped up into the Order Hoo Hoo team. And so was that quite a young age as well, like getting up to Prem's division? Um, well, you know, obviously I went to secondary school uh, at St. Paul's College in Auckland, which is um, now a rugby league school, believe it or not, but uh, back, back in the day it was a rugby union school. So I played a little bit of rugby union at school. Um, my brother was a rugby league player and superstar. He was the captain of most grades that he played for in Auckland as a junior. And um, I could, I, I was terrible at, um, well, not terrible, I suppose, but I couldn't make a rep side, but he was a, he was a champion rep side. And... Um, he was part of a, a first 15 at St Paul's College that won the, the B grade for secondary school one year, and the, so then they went to the A grade the next year, and they won that. They won the A grade, so they won the B grade and A grade, which is quite phenomenal. And um, I was not mem a member of that side. And uh, um, Bernie Fraser and Colin Farrell, two All Blacks to be, and they had some other handy players, obviously, and um, they were on that side. But um, uh, yeah, I, I'd never made a rip. Only rips I'd ever made as a youngster was um, uh, rugby union at, at schoolboy level. So um, I played one yeah. year of 15 rugby rugby union, and um, they got, I got picked in an Auckland blue side. There was a white and a, 
had an Auckland white and an Auckland blue, and I think the blue side was us. Not sure. Um, and, and they were the rugby league players, so we had like Kurt and Dane was on the side, and myself, wow. and uh, a few other guys. And uh, we played rugby league with rugby union rules. So you know, um, we pass you know, because in rugby league you can't pass the ball off the ground. In rugby union you can. So, um, and we made it all the way to the grand final, and we played the other Auckland side in the grand final. But it was a wet and windy day, and lineouts and scrums were the you know, uh, the big point of the day, and uh, we weren't much good at that. So we and we only just got beat actually. So we had a we had a pretty good side. Okay, so when did the crossover to rugby league happen, and how did that all come about? Well, um, um, I'd always played rugby league up up until the, the one year I or I played rugby union at school. Um, so, um, and then when I went back to playing rugby league after I left school, so. Um, uh, I played one more year. I think I was I left school, and I played another year. And I met Graham Lowe, who was coaching my old team, and um, he was he was our he was our player coach. So he was a um, it was an age group where there was no age, and there was a weight on a certain day. So um, okay. it, it worked out pretty good. So um, so in that in that team, we had Des White's son. We had um, Stan Napa, who went to North Brisbane with me, who also went on to play senior football with me at Odo. Um, and he went to North, came down to North Sydney for a little bit. Um, Gary Prone, another Kiwi, um, yeah, he was okay. our hooker. So I was, yep. I, was the front, I was in the front row with, with um, Stan, we were the, we were the props, and uh, Gary Prone was a hooker. Um, the most versatile, versatile um, player you've ever seen. He could play on, and he's had played on the wing centre, fullback. Second row lock hooker for the Kiwis, so he was wow. he could play anywhere. He was just just a freak, yeah. And um, uh, Graham Lowe was in the second row with um, Owen Wright uh, or Eddie Napa, and Owen I think Owen Wright was on the back. So had that Kiwi forward pack, had that we had three Kiwis, and Eddie Napa was most probably at that age better than all of us put together. So um, yeah, we had a pretty good yeah. side. That's amazing, man. So uh, just so when you did play. Prems for order who what's it like stepping up to that level um and and going around the Auckland provincial comp yeah it was look I was I was I was absolutely blessed and I have been blessed my whole life I've got to say I um I went to an order who side that it was coached by Joe Gwynn who was a marvelous coach and um I had some wonderful players lots of lots of Kiwis running around um Shane Dowsell was our captain um halfback um Bobby Jarvis was our 58 um, we had um, I'm, I'm sure, just trying to think. Um, should have got all my photos there, shouldn't I? Um, Paul Martetti, I uh, was our fullback or winger or centre, whatever he decided to play that day. He was also a Kiwi. Um, John Wright, um, who was a Kiwi, he was a prop. Um, uh, Tippy Taylor was our hooker, he was a, he was a Kiwi. So, yeah, we, we had and we had some um, real, real talent right throughout the grade. Bill Torrance, yeah, his son, played on the Played for us, so yeah, we 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 were um, we were a good side, definitely. So, uh, do you remember playing in the inter provincial championship on Carlow Park in 1978 with the names like Fred Arcoy and Olsen Filipina and Gary Prome, as you mentioned? And you guys won 20 to 13. Do you remember much about that game? Uh, no, I, I actually no, I can't remember at all. To tell you the truth, are you sure I played? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, you definitely okay. played it long. It was a question from Dave Goodenough from Cartoon Sports. He's like one of your biggest fans. And he was just oh, wondering okay. if you remember. I'm playing. sorry. Yeah, no, I had no recollection whatsoever. I'm sorry. Um, that's all right. Um, yeah. You guys won. So all good. That's good. Yeah, well, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what were you like as a trainer back in the day? Uh, were you sort of the one who did all the extras, you know, got up early, ran before work, all that stuff? Like, what were you like? Yeah, I look. I, I worked physically, um, so I was a British labourer. And uh, Bobby Jarvis, the our five eight, he got me the job. He was a, he was a, an apprentice bricky or learning to be a bricky. And he used to mix the mud and, and get the um, um, mix the mortar and, and get the bricks organised and do the scaffolding for the brickies. And he needed someone else to do that so he could step up onto the trail. So I put my hand up for that. And um, so I, I worked really hard um, physically. And uh, at the end of my first year, actually doing that uh, sort of work, I was. Um, I was exhausted, you know, my, my body was breaking down big time because I'd work um, eight or nine hours a day with one smogo and uh, pretty much running the whole day, keeping three brickies going with mud and bricks and scaffolds. So it was, a, it was a hard gig. And then 
then uh, they would go to training and, um, you know, train on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I, I used to eat, like, um, loads and loads of food. Mum would give me a, a fresh a fresh loaf of bread and um, some filling, and I'd have it all it'd all be gone by uh, lunchtime. And I'd um, have, like, two or three litres of water, and that would all be gone. And I'd stop at a fish and chip shop, shop uh, before training, and I'd have a, um, I'd buy two dollars worth of chips, just chips, and, and eat them all before I train. So, um, and I was, I was like really lean. I was, um, yeah, I was um, skinny, you know. And um, yeah, yeah. So I, I just, I just worked hard. So yeah, I didn't really need to do a lot of extras. I don't think. Oh, awesome, awesome. So uh, Shannon Harrison wants to know what was your typical pre-game routine. Ah, uh, well, it, it was sort of. It, I suppose it. Um, I always, I always, um, you know, I'd read a little bit about pregame stuff and how to prepare for big events. And so the day before was I used to get the, at the same time I was going to play the next day, I'd um, get all my gear out and I'd pack, pack my bag and I'd think positive things about the game and who we were playing. And I'd see myself in my mind's eye doing good things and um, and be very positive about the, the results from, you know, see tackling somebody or, or, you know, good passing and you know, good skills and stuff like that. And, um, so I, and I, that was the day before, and I'd pack it and repack it a couple of times to make sure everything was in there. Um, in the morning of the the day of the game, I would eat um, pancakes with ice cream, with uh, sometimes with ice cream, sometimes with lemon and sugar. But I always that was my pregame meal. So um, uh, it was something that uh, conditioned myself to. Um, I really liked it anyway, so it was good, and I was never hungry before a game. So um, yeah. it seemed it seemed to do the trick. It, it uh, settled my nerves, and every now and again, I might have a. Um, like a protein milkshake or something like that, but um, okay, yeah, yeah, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so 1975, you're selected for Auckland. What's it like making the step up to such a strong provincial side, and then going on to that 1977 Grand Slam, uh, defeating Australia, England, and France in the space yeah, of 20 wonderful. days? Well, you know, we had, obviously, um, Dave, we had a great side. You know, we had, we had we had player depth and talent everywhere you looked. You know, we had a we had a big yeah. um big powerful front row and um, we, we got as much ball as we needed and we had you know, really skillful and outstanding backs and um, it was just to be part of that. So I'd like to, to play with someone like um, uh, Dennis Williams. He was just a machine. He was a, the cleverest bloke of all time and uh, great, great skills. I'm really um, surprised that he didn't um, maybe go overseas, venture overseas, but he, I don't, don't think that was part of, part of who he was. So, um, yeah, he was well, – we, 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 we had a wonderful forward pack and – Great backs, and you know, you know that you, you you mentioned that. Um, so I, I missed, I was injured, I think, but I missed selection in 1975, and the boys went and played manly in the in the Amco Cup, I think it was called, or Tooth Cup, in Australia. So, um, and they won, and when when I when they came back, you know, you were out whatever around town, you ran into the boys, and you went to the trainings and that, and um, and they were saying how they played against oh the great. Lock forward from Manly, from was a pommy guy, great ball player, real, real, real um, hard, nasty bugger. And he and they all reckon they ended up with stitches from him with his elbows. He was just giving it to the boys left, right, and centre. And um, I was just trying to think who it was, but he, uh, with this guy's name is quite a legendary player. Um, he ended up coaching um, Newcastle to their premiership. Um, so um, yeah, obviously I was like, wow. And then and then I I went and I think. Um, we played, um, oh gee, I don't know, New, Newcastle, and we beat Newcastle at um, at uh, Balmain, and um, um, I dislocated my shoulder. I think seventy five. Yeah, that was just just yeah. So uh, I got a busted shoulder, well, busted my shoulder, but I went back in okay that time. So um, I played up the rest of the season. And, you know, in that seventy seven game, I was trying to explain to my eldest son that in seventy seven when we played the the Pommies and the um, Aussies and the French. Um, there was three three Wednesdays in a row. So you worked all day. You finished work. I was brickies labouring. Um, you went home, had a feed, jumped in the car, got into town, um, played the game. You know, we, all, we had marvellous support, obviously, at Caldwell Park and the fans and the diehards there. And um, got out in the drink with the boys afterwards. And then um, got up early, went to work again. And the next day was obviously Thursday. So you, you went and trained with the with your club side. And then um, wow. you played on Saturdays. And looked up in the paper on Monday to see if you, or Saturday or Sunday, you played. You looked at whether you made the Kiwi side, or sorry, the um, Auckland side on the, on a Monday, and then you go and train on a Tuesday. At generally, we played at um, 
we practiced in Green Lane there. Um, oh, yeah. And um, there was one light, and it was winter time, so it was dark when most of the time we were, we were training. And then we went and got our we played the next day, the next evening after work. So um, it was yeah, it was it was pretty hard. <laughs> yes, different times. <laughs> Yeah, what was that Australian team like that you beat in that sort of uh, run of wins? Uh, pretty, pretty like their A side, you know, their superstars. Oh, I, I don't know. I think um, look, there was, there's some very good players obviously playing, but I don't know if it was, don't know if it was their test side. But um, um, we had uh, I remember you know like Mick Cronin played. Um, yeah, oh, wow. they, they had that Rocket Ready. He was a fabulous football player. I actually can't believe that he's not in the NRL Hall of Fame. He was a wonderful football player. Um, yep. It was pretty old school. He, he um, liked to hand it out a bit um, and um, used to get away with a bit, but every now and again you catch him. Um, but yeah, he, no, they were, they, were, they were a good side. You know, Mark Harrison, the wing, and um, the, I, I don't know if they've ever given an Australian jersey to a bum, you know, like that, 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 that generally doesn't happen, obviously. Okay. Right. Okay. So 1977, you're selected for the Kiwis for the World Cup. Uh, just how special was it receiving your first test jersey and playing in front of your family and friends for the first time? Yeah, well, um, I was actually, I, I don't know if we played, I think, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm correct, I think uh, uh, we played down in Christchurch. So, um, you know, my family were in Auckland, so, um, but they would have seen it on TV, no doubt. So, um, but it was a cold, cold, wet winter's day down there, and I came You're on welcome. as a replacement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, um Yes, yeah, so I came on as a replacement. I don't recall too much of it, but I know I was really nervous. Uh, you know, as a kid, I'd always go to Carlow Park when the test matches were on and um, and marvel at um, how big and strong these people were and um, always felt, you know, we, we, we um, maybe let ourselves down a bit and uh, I was very keen not to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough too. And then also you went on the 1978 tour of Australia and Papua New Guinea, but you weren't originally selected, is that right? And then no, exactly. Called yeah. in. So do you want to explain how all that went down and tell us some great stories about Papua New Guinea? Oh, <laughs> um, right, on. so uh, 78, I, uh, I I didn't trial and used to have to trial to um to um get in the yeah. Kiwis, and um I couldn't. I was I was, I was injured or something, and um so they took. Uh, it took everyone by me, I suppose. So, um, and then the, there was a few injuries over there. So, um, and Barry Edkins was a very, very, very good football player, great school football player, who I'd played with before, and actually put me over for a test try, I think, in, um, well, gee, I don't know what year, but at Carlow Park, anyway. Um, um, so he 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 was busted. So he went, and I came. So I I turned up on a Saturday morning, and I I think I played just about every game on that tour. So I'd played. I got there Saturday. We played Illawarra, I think, on the Sunday. And we went, yep. um, I went, you know, the weekend game, the Wednesday game, the weekend game, the Wednesday game, right throughout the whole, for the rest of the tour. So um, I had plenty of football. Um, and we we ended, we got beaten this test series. Although the last the last test, we, um, we were going pretty good at halftime. I think we were actually winning at halftime. And... Um, okay. Um, we'd, we'd been really trained hard the, the, not the day before. In fact, we, we um, one of the test selectors that was over there, uh, we actually a lot of the board from New Zealand was over there, and one of them called me aside. We're doing 400s on the Friday night before the game on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, um, you should tell the boys not to do them. And I said, mate, I've only just been called in. I'm a junior here. He said, why don't you go and tell the coach that we shouldn't be doing it? And that shut him up. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't my place to... to um, to speak to um, the coach as a young fellow anyway. And um, yeah, we, we were going really good and at half time. I can remember saying to Butch Cole, who was a super um, fit guy and a wonderful player, I said, mate, we're going to right, Butch. How are your legs feeling? He said, mate, they feel like wood. I don't know how we're going to go in the second half. And we got run over the top in the second half. So, and, But yeah, you know, those are the experiences of playing on the Sydney cricket ground, hard grounds, um, and, uh, you know, the cricket grounds. As in North Sydney Oval, they make them with um, bull-eye soil, and when they okay. when they roll it, it's like concrete. You know, it is like concrete. You could, in fact, when we were at North Sydney Oval, um, we used to try and get our opponents on on the cricket pitch, and, and in, they, in the old days, you could spear tackle, so you'd spear someone into the ground, and it'd be like it'd be like someone hit, hit someone with an axe. It just 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 um, split them open. It was unbelievable. That's crazy. So, uh, what were the people like over there? The Aussies, 
Sorry, when you went to Papua New Guinea, what was it oh, like? Oh, sorry, Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea. Um, Papua New Guinea. Um, yeah, look, they were they were, they were the only country in the world where rugby league is a national sport, and and it's mm-hmm. they just love the game, and and you know they would um they would do anything to watch a game, to to approach you, to to say to say hello. They were they were super friendly, but their um yeah you know, their rules over there are you know, it's a different place, you know, like if you um. <laughs> Ran over, ran over a pig. If someone was in the car and ran over a pig, yeah, they'd haul you out and kill you. That, that was oh, no for uh, a tooth for a tooth. It was, it was like a serious place. Like, I've been there on a number of occasions, and um, a couple of times um, I've seen riots. Um, you know, just happened in front of you, and because uh, you've got yeah. nothing to do with it, uh, they're fine. Yeah, they, they leave you alone. But man, it's, it's just serious. Hey, it's um, I see actually. This week, fifty-three people were killed in a massacre up there in a in a tribal yeah. tribal dispute. So, um, it's it's serious up there, right? Eh? Very. It is. Yeah, you, you you probably couldn't pay me to go there. To be fair. <laughs> no, well, it, it, and and you'd be a smart man, but not going just quietly. I mean, they're lovely people, but that's you know, there's certain things you can do and can't do up there, and you don't know which they are, so you, you best not go. <laughs> Yep, that works for me. I'd rather go to like an island yep. in Fiji and soak some sun up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving on to 1980, you signed with Brisbane North, but in a rather unconventional way in a pub. So how did all that come about? Uh, well, it wasn't a pub; it was actually a bar, and it was a, called the um, Back Bar at the at the North Devils um, Club. And um, uh, I wasn't; I, I had, I'd had a lot of problems trying to get a clearance from New Zealand. So um, uh, finally, um, with the help from BG Williams and um, a bit of pressure. They allowed me to, um, well, they gave me a clearance, and because um, I threatened to take them to court because there was a guy by the name of, I think it was Blackler, Ray Blackler or something. He'd already taken them to court, and it was they ruled in his favour. Okay. But by the time they he got them to court, um, he was past his playing days. But there was a ruling, and so you know we only had to really it was president. So um, um, anyway, so because I'd played six tests, they said the, the new rule was that if you'd had Played six tests uh, or been on two tours, you could you were eligible for a transfer, but there's still still payment to be made. And um, okay. I think um, Queensland or North Devils they paid the money. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I was so I'd, I'd been I'd been playing. I had I wasn't allowed to train with North to start with, and uh, so I only had about two weeks training before I played my first game. Um, and uh, I hadn't actually signed anything, so I was um, living at. Uh, Graham Lowe's place. I was um, I was a plasterer by trade at that stage, so I um, I been working there. He'd got me a job, and I used to go to training after I'd worked. And um, after the first game, I think we played Valleys at Valleys, Newman Oval, and um, it was horrendously hot. It was like like it is up here today. Actually, it was very humid. And um, yeah, um, I'd been to church, and I'd been a church goer, and um, prayed for rain, and the rain was pouring down as we're driving to the game, and um, yeah, so after after that game, I um they they signed me and um, Bob Bax was quite a legend in the area. He was a SP bookie and a great coach and a great administrator of the game. He came in, we were having a beer, and he came in and grabbed a coaster and he wrote a number on the back of it and he said, um, well, I think the original figure was like three hundred and he said, oh, I'm going to sign you for three hundred and I said, oh, I'd rather five hundred and he said, cross the three hundred out and put five hundred down and and um, and um, then. I don't know whether it was then or a little later, I went and approached him and I said, I'm going to need $100 for every time I put someone over for a try. And, yeah. he, and he, he, um, he agreed to that. So it was quite a good year, obviously, yeah. Yeah, they must have really wanted you. You're just making these demands and they're like, okay, <laughs> whatever it takes. I mean, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, um, uh, yeah we, we, look, we had a good side. You know, we, we played in the yeah. band finally here and um, we had um, outstanding halves, um, Ross Hendricks and Mark Murray. We had wonderful centers, big, strong, powerful guys, you know. Um, yeah. And they, they'd, um, they'd been, um, I think they'd been scouted previously by Sydney Sides, but didn't like it down in Sydney and came home. Um, yeah. We had a great goal kicker, super fullback. We, and we had, like, not only two of, we, had, we used to have two and three of. So we had, you know, good backup. Uh, Greg Kineski, uh, Turtle, was a hooker. So he was like lightning in the scrum. A great front row. Um yeah, we, we 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 were stacked. We had a good side, but they were young and they hadn't didn't realise that when you look back now, I suppose you, you think, yeah, why why wouldn't they win? You know, how, they were a great side, but we were just they were 
no, nobody had ever been to a grand final, as I've later found out. And I was like, really? I was in a shock, yeah. And, um, yeah, so they were really nervous about going to a grand final, especially the A-grade grand final in Brisbane. In fact, there's a story. I got called um, by um, one ZB, I think, in New Zealand, and, and the All Blacks were playing on a Saturday. And they were saying, oh, is, is that the reason you guys play on Sunday? Because the All Blacks are playing and they're going to turn up at... Um, at Lang Park, I said, oh, completely the opposite. I said, the reason they're playing on Saturday is so someone will turn up to watch them play. And uh, he said, oh, no, they're the All Blacks. And he's carrying on, you know, because, you know, in New Zealand, that's perceived the hell it is. And I wasn't trying to be a smart yeah. man. Yeah. I said, well, call me back on Monday. And um, I reckon there'll be three times the amount of people at the, at the Rugby League as the, who's at Ballymore Oval. And um, there was like 12,000 people at um, Ballymore, which was quite a, quite a good crowd um, for, it's yeah. only a small, small area. And there was like, I don't know. 38, 40, oh, sorry, 38, 42, or something like that, 42,000 people. In fact, when I ran out into Lane Park and the, the, the noise, I was just going, wow, because I'd, I'd used to sit outside having a bang and look at the ground before I changed and went, went and played and, and I ran out and I was just going, wow, dude, man, those few people are making some noise. And I looked up and went, gee, there's a lot of people there. So it yeah. was always oh, just jam packed, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. So uh, speaking of all your contract, uh, uh, when you said you wanted a bit more money and whatever, there's there's a question from Peter Sixtus asking, is it true that part of your contract with North Devils that you're given a box of beers after each match? Oh, I, I, gee, I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Um, I know we, 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 all, we all drank plenty of beer after each match that we won. Uh -huh. um, and um, But it was funny. I, I was looking at somebody... I think my son had been going through um, some of my um, memorabilia stuff and you know stuff I never look at. Anyway, um, he said, "Oh, Dad," and he gave me this. It was a it was a rundown of the year at, at the Devils uh, by the newspaper clippings, um, game by game. And um, we sort of stormed into the into the finals and we cut in a, it was a top four. And, and I said, oh, "We're a good side," as I said to you. We're good players. I was thinking, "We said we had that happen." And then I went back and I read some of the you know pre uh, like the games at the start of the season and we'd. We'd be lucky to have 11 men on the field most of the time because, you know, all these young guys were blowing all the time. And um, <laughs> well, I suppose, you know, I was most probably doing it too. But, um, yeah, we were getting blows loaded <laughs> off all the time. And it was like um, – and then finally we sort of calmed down a bit and started playing a bit of footy and um, we started getting some pretty good results. So, yeah, it was um, it was very different. But I don't know. I, I would have thought that we'd had enough beer supplied without um, any special stuff for me. I, I, I don't think I was ever a big drinker. Um, okay. But, but, but I did like a beer. Fair enough, too. Um, so what were the conditions like for you to cope with uh, just when you first went over? Like, what was the heat like for you coming from New Zealand? It was murderous. It was, it was, yeah, it was horrible. I can't imagine. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, um, yeah, and, and, you know, even at night, yeah, we didn't have air conditioning where I was living, so it was, it, oh. it was just horrendous, you know? And, um, in fact, in the first, the first game I played for, um, uh, first trial at the Newman Able game, I'd been in prayed for rain and stuff like that. And I, well, I couldn't, I couldn't get strapped. I had an ankle that I always used to strap, with, but but I was sweating that much that the sticky tape wouldn't stick to it. So um, really? yeah, it was, it was it was unbelievable. And, I, and because of the the contractual dispute with New Zealand Rugby League, I'd only had a couple of weeks actual training with the team. So um, okay. it was it was quite um, uh, it was yeah very difficult. And at one point in the game, I was thinking, I mean, I can't go on. I'm I'm I'm, going, I'm out of here. Yeah, so I thought, you know, the old story, you know, you've got to take something, you got to go off, you've got to take someone with you. So um, <laughs> just right in front of me, we had a scrum and their halfback, me, their halfback, while he was on the ground. And, and their halfback was captain coach was Ross Strudwick, who was a very good football player and um, a good coach too. And um, I said to the referee, well, what about that ump? And he said, um, it's nothing. So I said, oh, well, maybe this is nothing. So I sat Rossi on his bum and uh, it started, you know, and... Um, there was people going everywhere, and uh, I was I was going to make sure I got it off, so I was hoeing in. And um, yeah, there, there was uh, one of the guys I was just about to whack, and he and he just put a look behind me, so I dropped him and I turned, and there was another guy running running flat out. So I, I stuck my hand out, and he ran basically on the end of it, and then back and fighting and wrestling around on the ground with somebody. And they pulled me off, and I thought, well, that's it. You know, I'm gone. I'm exhausted, and now I'm really exhausted. You know? And the referee said, mate. Put your head back in that scrum. We don't do that sort of shit here. And I was just like, wow, what, you know, what do you have to do around there to get ordered off? So she was on for young and old many a time. So, um, but that was just how the day, the day game was, mate. Brilliant. I also read uh, that Wally Lewis claims you tried to kill him during a semi final during that year, when in fact you actually saved his life. So, who's telling the truth? How did the story actually go? 
Well, yeah, good point. Um, well, the, you know that I was telling you when I, the, that bit of fight, that bit of a ruckus that we had, and someone was running it, come running in. Well, it turns out that was Wally Lewis, and I didn't didn't know Wally Lewis from a bar of soap. Um, anyway, he'd run on. To, you know, I stuck my hand out, and he ran into it, and he broke his jaw. Um, but someone else on the side, they got the blame for it, so they got a couple of weeks off. Um, and Shane Bernard, and Shane was as um, as uh, uh, like. He most probably deserved two weeks off after every game because he'd done some he'd do some terrible things. So um, everyone just figured that he got what he deserved in the long run anyway. But um, that game in the semi final, um, I was got up to play the ball and I looked at Wally and I didn't think I wasn't sure anything happened in the in, in the actual tackle, but I got up to play the ball and um, he was turning blue on in front of me you know, and um, really? yeah he was he, and that's a hard thing you can't make yourself turn blue. And you can't um, fake that. No, you can't fake that. And um, so I, I, you know, I said I played the ball and I looked at him and yeah, you know, so I said to the line umpire, mate, um, you might want to check this guy out. It doesn't look right. And he come running on, waving his flag, and the whistle got blown, and you know the doctors came out and they have him mouth to mouth and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. um, he had to go off, and I think maybe they were out of it, out of um, reserves at that stage because you know in the old days you only got two reserves if you used them up. That was yeah. it. You know? So yeah. they might have been down to 12 or whatever. And um, in the old days, I could stand off the back of the scrum as a lock. And um, they passed me the ball and I took him on and um, um, managed to slip a nice ball to our 5'8". And he scored on the post and kicked the goal and we won the game. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, but again, um, I'm not sure whether it was me who got him in the throat, but um, a couple of things sort of come to mind. Uh, you shouldn't be tackling that high for me to get you with the elbows of you in the throat anyway. And... Um, yeah. Um, and I did save his life. You know, I, I, could, I could have walked away, but um, yeah, yeah. So I, I re- I'm claiming I saved his life, but he reckons I got him with the elbow. So um, maybe. Well, we're going with Mark Graham's version because uh, you're the man. <laughs> I'm pleased, I'm pleased about that. <laughs> All right, okay. So 1980, you're selected for the for the Kiwis, and you're made captain. Uh, what went through your mind when you were named as captain, and when you went? Also on the tour of England and France, so it's got to be a pretty great honour. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I was over the moon. Um, I think we played a, a series um, in that year. Maybe we played the Poms earlier in that year. I think, um, and I, I wasn't the captain, and I was only I was brought in. Um, maybe it was Australia we played. I don't know, but pretty our crew was a captain that I took over from. I think, and. Um, Freddie was on that tour too, and he was a great player and a really good coach, and uh, I'm sorry, really good captain. And um, obviously, I was very pleased for myself, but obviously disappointed for him too. But um, I was lucky enough to be on that tour with um, some very experienced guys. Guys that, you know, Dan O'Hara was on that tour, um, yeah. Freddie, um, Butch Cole, Graham uh, Tex West was my um, roommate, um, and they'd all been captains of the Kiwis. So, you know, there was, um, 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 oh, yeah, there's the um, Pineapple Whitaker. It's all guys that have been around for a long time. You know? So um, there was never a, a problem in getting someone to have you know, a yarn with about what we should do next or, you know. Yeah. Or, um, so there was lots of experience. Anyone was willing to, to buy in and give um, give a hand. It was it was great. We had a really good side and, um, and the boys um, had uh, great morale and great spirit and um, played um, the way we liked to play. We used to, used to ball quite a lot. And... Um, we thrilled the crowds, I believe, and um, we were meant to get beat pretty easily on that tour, you know, because we were a lot of young fellas. And um, we drew the Test Series with Great Britain, which kind of shocked them a bit. Um, we, I think we we might have won the first. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, um, it was, yeah, we had one each in a draw, I think. So um, so it was a draw in the series. And then we went to France. And um, so uh, France was, you know, man, that was... Different place, you know. They, they had rules that you had never heard of, you know. And uh, really? the referee was the only one that seemed to know them. And um, so, like, I think we ended up drawing the test series. I can remember going at the final. So we had maybe two tests. So we lost the first test by about a point. Um, and uh, it was, you know, we had four or five tries just allowed. You know, we, it, it was really? okay. Yeah, it was just it was crazy stuff. Eh? And uh, oh. anyway, um, we've turned up for the second test or the last test. And um, we're like, there's no one in the stadium. There's the, yeah. the gates aren't open. There's no one there. And so we pull up in our bus and go, we're in the right place. And, you know, 
and everyone's like pulling their hair out, and apparently we were in the right place. They put the game back three hours and didn't tell us. So um, I, was, I was spewing. I was beside myself. And um, so the team talk went something like this. Um, um, or I want them all bleeding before the first scrum goes down. I don't care. We, <laughs> we are going to... We are going to give it to these blokes. And I'll tell you what, the football, yeah, well, you know, they, they were they were pulling our leg, and um, and uh, uh, we believe we were cheated out of the first one, whether we were or not, that doesn't, doesn't matter, but we were, we were convinced. And um, so, um, yeah, so we kicked off, and uh, I think our mate dropped the ball from the kickoff, and um, we had about nine of them bleeding by, by the time he dropped the ball. So, so uh, she was on for young and old, and, um, <laughs> and the pitch. French are nice and tough too. Don't worry about that. But uh, yeah. we had a pretty pretty hard bunch of people. So um, and we we I think we won that game. Yeah, not not by a lot, but um, the idea was to hurt them, and we certainly got about that. Oh, brilliant! I love it. I love it. Okay, so your buddy Sam Stewart wants to know uh, who was your best and worst teammate on tour. A <laughs> uh, roommate or teammate? Oh, room, roomie. Roommate. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously, Sammy's. Um, I had. I, I was lucky enough to have. Um, uh, two or seven in '78 to uh, Australia, um, '80 and '85 as a captain, um, and my roommates were um, for those on those long tours anyway. Um, first one was Alan Rushton and uh, uh, Cantabrian, um, and his nickname was Nutter Rushton, and Nutter was uh, he was aptly named, and um, he was very very hard hard man. And um, actually, I think he might have gone on the '82 two or two. England and France. Oh, I know how he was there. Um, anyway, so yeah, so um, and and the good thing about having Alan Rushton as your as your um, roommate is that um, uh, um, he was like one of the, one of the hardest people to ever. He was he was ferocious. And in, in the old days, you know, a hooker, um, he had to put his arms over someone else's shoulders to hook the ball, obviously. And yeah. so he was unprotected. So he needed to be really hard because there was lots coming yeah. his way. <laughs> and um, and he was really hard, let me tell you. And um, so, and it also enabled me to meet all the South Islanders because all the Aucklanders seemed to stick together, and all the you know, yep. South yep. Islanders and Wellingtonians, and you know, so so it, it sort of broke that down. So I got to meet everybody on numerous occasions, as as you do. I mean, you know, it's not that you don't like other people, but you hang with the people that you know. And all of a sudden, yep. I, was, I got to meet all the all the uh, Canterbury blokes and all the West Coasters and. The, uh, it was, so it was really great, and, and and from that sort of period of time on, uh, as the captain, when I took over the captaincy and we toured, I'd pick the roommates. I'd, I'd, I'd put them together, so I'm always mixed up. The, and I'd, sometimes we'd have people come and say, "Oh no, I don't want to, you know he did this to me last time we played, and I'm you know I don't like him. He's whatever." I said, oh, "Okay, we'll leave it for ten days and see how you go." You know, in ten days' time, I say, "Mate, you know, you, you want to talk about that roommate again?" Oh no, that's I'm a lovely bloke. I couldn't, you know, couldn't lovely, you know. So it, it worked out good. So it sort of really bonded the whole the whole joint. Um, so I was very lucky there. And Rusty, I'll tell you a story about Rusty. We were, we were um, playing in, you know, in um, Australia. We were up in Townsville, and we we're playing, I suppose, North Queensland. And um, our captain on the 78 tour was a very, very good player, um, Kenny Sterling, was their halfback. And he ran from the base of the scrum and um, um, he got wooden. Someone just smashed him. We come out of the scrum and um, and there was Kenny uh, Kenny Sterling lying on the ground and the referee was telling this bloke off and the warden that's appealing. And Rusty just Rusty walked walked out of the scrum, had a look at what was going on, walked over and just flogged this bloke. And uh, so the you know the referee was going to give them the penalty, and then I think, but we, we managed to talk them back into getting the penalty. Anyway, later on in the game, Rusty ran from dummy half, and this bloke just stiff arm whack straight across the board, whack. And Rusty went down, which shocked everybody. And it means his roommate, I ran in to see you know, a bit of a scuffle and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, Rusty gets up and plays the ball, and I pass it off, and I knew there was something there was going to be some damage now. And um, yeah. And this guy's giving it to Rusty. Oh, I got you, you know, this, that, and the other, and, and gobbled him. And Rusty goes, look at your arm, you idiot. And there's a bone sticking out of this guy's arm. And um, oh, yeah, it was just, oh, 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 oh man. And he sort of realized, and he, he clasped his hand, and he fell down on the ground. And Rusty walked over and gave it a kick as he was hanging on to it. And, and oh, oh, it was oh, my God. That's yeah. rough. Yeah. That's rough. And, 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 um, the referee and everyone else hadn't seen it, but the crowd had, and I thought they were going to come on the park. It was just, it was unbelievable. Well, but he, he thought he thought nothing of it. He just said, "Mate, that's you know, that's just bad luck. You know, you know it's <laughs> you want to go that way." It's um, 
I'm going to hurt you. And and that's he was the sort of bloke you send into a dark alley, and the dark alley ran away. You know, he was he was very hard. Um, oh, and, love it. And then see, he was he was hard man. Anyway, um, right. Um, so my next roomie was um, Graham Tex West, and I nicknamed him yeah. Tex. And um, he was like the um, shit. He he could bump into you in the hallway, and you'd end up with bloody bruises. He was just a hard bastard. You know, everything about him was hard, yeah. And um, often I used to, you know, you'd pass in the morning and run into the opposition and I'd be going, thank God it's not me, because I, I could hear them going, oh, jeez, oh, man. That, that, that. <laughs> he'd, he'd be breaking stuff on the opposition all the time. He was um, yeah, a champion bloke and a really dry-witted guy and um, just a good, good human being, you know. Um, yeah. Um, really, really enjoyed my uh, my three months with um, we made text. Um, and he's, you know, I saw a documentary not long ago, oh, a bit while ago now, but how he got the Wigan Knights organised and how he coached them. And yeah, he was like just just a champion bloke. And he's, I think he's living yeah. back home now. Um, he's a wonderful man. And um, and then obviously Sammy Stewart. So, um, um, yeah. and all of them, um, I, I would um, I would trust my life with uh, just good people. Um, and Sammy, obviously, he was like um, this young guy. Um, super fit, super keen, the tidiest yeah. man in the world. And um, yeah. when I, I can remember when I first first um, met him, we walked in. Good day, mate. How you going? Good. And I just I just grabbed my duffel bag, big bag, just tip it upside down, spread all my clothes out, so I knew where everything was. And I didn't have to go through my bag and mess it up all the time. And Sammy yeah. would go, mate, you're going to pick that up? I'd be going, I don't know why. And, well, <laughs> you're keep the place tidy. I'm going, why? We're here for you know whatever period of time. So what? You know? What about when they come to clean? I said, well, they can clean around it, mate. No, I, you know, I don't really care. But he was like, he was he was so fastidious. So half his room, his side of the room was really yep. tight. <laughs> mine, mine wasn't, basically. But um, yep. wonderful. Just a great human being, Sammy. I, I, saw, I, saw, I saw the uh, interview you did with him. And um, yep. uh, he he mentioned the, the, the game down in Colossians Test match down there. It was freezing cold. Yep. And there's a little bit more to that, let me tell you. I, well, um, let's hear it. And Sammy, Sammy wasn't lying when he said that I did that, but I was freezing. So we're playing this game down at Crossy. It's freezing cold, it's raining, and it's freezing. So at half time they give us new jerseys. And they, they mentioned yep. the part of the game. And they said, oh, you, know, you don't worry, it's cold, I know, but we'll give you new jerseys at half time, you'll be sweet. You know? So oh, that was good. So at half time they gave me the jersey that I'd played with the week before up in Auckland against Papua New Guinea, which will cut the sleeves off. And it wasn't bloody at all. So I was freezing bloody cold. Yes. And, I, and, I, and me being me, I was giving it to the. Um, the manager or whoever the guest you was, and I was just going, you imbecile, this is your job. How do you, you know? So um, I was most probably not the nicest person when I, when I got wound up. And yeah, so um, um, everything Sammy said was true. And um, uh, he's another champion bloke. And um, yeah, just a, a lovely, lovely man. He, he's got a wonderful family and we often speak. And um, um, I've got a good story. And I, you didn't get this out of it, but... Um, he was um, in Burley recently, uh, well, maybe maybe last year. Yeah. yeah. He was having a couple, a couple of Burley Beach area because he always hangs around down there. And he, he lives not far from okay. there. And uh, he's got a big group of trainers. He likes to train. So all these people that, um, um, all these fathers of, of his son's mates, if that makes sense. Um, and they all train together. And um, he's having a couple one morning and um, not far from the public toilets. And he hears this screaming and yelling, so he runs in. And this bloke rushes past him on the way out, and he sees this bloke being stabbed. There's blood everywhere. And there's, you know, mob, oh, this bloke, yeah. So um, he says, "Mate, are you okay?" He says, "No, no, I'm not." So he gets uh, the cleaner comes in, so the cleaner grabs him and, and calls the cops in there. And so Sammy starts chasing this guy, and this this is like um, I don't know, he's a drugged up lunatic of some sort. He's obviously got a knife, and uh, turns oh. out that he didn't. There wasn't even an argument, or there was no. He just walked up and started stabbing this bloke. So you know, you've got no chance at all. So Sammy's chasing this bloke and he's on the phone to the cops and you know Sammy's a super thick bloke, so he's running along yeah. and he's telling the cops where he is. You know? And and um so he's chasing him and, and this bloke realizes he's being chased by Sam. So he he turns on Sam and Sam's running running backwards and uh, waiting this bloke that's trying to trying to name him. And he's saying, Good on you, Eddie. I said you missed again. You have got the cops coming, come on, keep going, yeah. And the bloke started running for his, so he's chasing him again. And the cops got him and Sam was having a great time with us. You the man, Sam. It made it made the news over here at all. So it was, uh, yeah, really good. Yeah. So uh, can't give us Sammy. Now, if anyone doesn't know that story about you uh, going off uh, freezing in Christchurch, 
watch the same Stuart episode. It's great. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, you can say yeah. that now, can't you? <laughs> so I understand, like as you said, you're a man of faith and you love going to church. Um, so were you raised as a, a Catholic, I believe, and that's yes, a big yeah. part of your life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and look, I um, I, I never know anything but you know. So I was yeah. raised as a Catholic. I was you know baptized, christened, um, confirmed, um, you name it, um, had communion, you know, everything. So I'm oh, very much uh, a Catholic. A lot of I've got some very good friends who are Catholic priests. Um, Sometimes I, I um, of late, I, I don't go to church. Sometimes the Catholic church annoys me, um, but I still believe in the good Lord. And, um, you know, I pray often. I pray every evening and every morning. And, um, oh. um, yeah, so uh, there's no doubt, about, you know, he's, he's walked with, walked with me every, every moment of my life. So I'm a very lucky, blessed person. Oh, that's awesome, man. And I also believe your faith in the Lord actually had some significance in your signing with the North Sydney Bears in 1981. So how did you end up at the North Sydney Bears? Um, I'd been approached by a couple of other clubs, and um, they were um, no, they were different. You know, we had people coming up and um, coming up to see me, and they were I don't know. Um, you know, one of them came to the dressing room after a game, and he sat down and introduced himself, and and he was sort of like half bagging the team and the club, and. I was quite offended by it. You know, I was just, oh, what's going on there? And I don't know whether he was trying to be humorous, but I didn't take it as being funny. And um, so that was negotiations broke down pretty much instantly. Um, anyway, so yeah. Yeah. And then the, the Bears came up. And um, anyway, I've been off to church that morning and I'd seen some people in church I hadn't seen there before. And, um, and I figured that might be the North Sydney people. So, um, well, I didn't know who they were to tell you the truth. And then I walked across the road and um, I didn't had no photos. I didn't know what they would look like. They, they obviously knew me. So I walked into the cafe. I was going to have a couple with them. I'll meet them there. And they um, these guys approached me and I said, oh, you're in church? Yeah. So it was um, uh, Ken McCaffrey and Ron Woolley. Um, so there's the CEO and the coach of the band. Right. And um, so, yeah, we had a bit of a chat and it was sort of um pretty good start, I suppose you'd say. And, uh, yeah, it was um, worked out all right. It worked really good. Nice man, and so so you signed with the Bears. Um, did you have much success or play much finals with the Bears during your career with them? No, I, no, I um I played um in eighty. I started there in eighty one, and I finished in eighty eight. And I had um, I think we had in eighty two. We went to the semis. We came third in the premiership. In those days, it was top five. So um, third gave you a rapid charge. So if you lost a game in the semis, you you got another chance. So. Yes, um, yes. We were we were a good side. We were a cracking side that year. Um, but we lost our most probably one of our better, well, two of our very good players in the first game. One broke his arm and one did his hamstring. So um, we got bundled out by two points against Eastern Suburbs in eighty two of the that um, in the eighty one. I think we had a pretty good side. We only just missed. Uh, we might have come sixth. Um, something like that. We we're pretty close to the top five. And then um, in eighty six, we played off to make the. Uh, the semis, but other than that, um, I was um, no, semi finals weren't, um, weren't something that we um, were able to you know, get to at North Sydney. But um, there's a, there's a as a anyone looking at this um, now and listening, um, there's a if they look up TED talks on um, on the computer or the phone and uh, look up uh, John Wooden, who's a basketball coach. And um, okay. it was I found him. I was gonna I was asked to write a speech and um, we we'll go to somewhere and make a speech. And I, I was gonna make a really good job of it. And then I started doing some research on stuff. And um, he talks about um, this guy talks about the the difference between winning and success. You know, and and to answer your question, I had lots of success, but I didn't when I part well, at Adelaide I was very successful. And at North Brisbane one year and we won the comp, but at North Sydney Bears. We didn't, we didn't win too much. Um, okay. But uh, there is a difference between winning and success, and it's explained wonderfully by this gentleman. He's, um, um, he's now since passed away, but it's, it's well worth listening to. Yeah, it's sort of my okay. philosophy on things. Uh, you know, it's basically um, if you've given all you can give, um, there's no shame in it. You know, there's no, no shame in losing. You know, it's, it's when you haven't yeah. given all you can give. You know, that's, that's, uh, um, that can be a problem. And, and there's plenty of people who go, oh, I, I couldn't have done any more. Well, you? You know, you think to yourself, oh, I think you could. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people that can hide behind that too. But, but, yeah. Right. 
Uh, awesome, man. Awesome. So who were some of the players you loved playing with and against during your time at the Bears, like being in the Sydney Cup? Um, I loved playing with Olsen because they didn't have to tackle him, and that was that was very hard. <laughs> yeah. um, I loved playing with um, Donnie McKinnon. Um, oh, big, yeah, big Don. Big Donnie, yeah. He was, um, he was, yeah. um, he was a giant of a man. In those days, like... You know, we didn't have you didn't play for 20 minutes, have 20 minutes off, then half time break off, then the next 20 minutes off, and then come back on and get paid for a whole game. Um, you got you know, sometimes you got paid by the minute depending on the contract you're on. Really, um, yeah, yeah. I, I had no, I used to get paid uh, two dollars a minute, really? So, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, some, yeah, there's a, there was a time up there I got uh, I got a bad injury, I got badly cut, and uh, I so I only played for like seven minutes. And it was uh, uh, it was like ten dollars a stitch. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd got fourteen dollars for the day, and um, and it was like ten dollars a stitch. So I was out of pocket. Um, oh, to, what? Yeah. So they used That's... to so at, at North and Brisbane, you get um, two hundred dollars for the win, but you got um, uh, one hundred and sixty of that for winning the game, and the forty was for coming to training on the two two or three nights, whatever we had. So if you if you lost, you only got the training money. So yeah, right. you got to live on that. Oh, I suppose you worked as well, didn't you? No, we worked. Yeah, we did. We, yeah, we, we we everyone everyone played football in the spare time. You know? So uh, yeah. Monday mornings were, or um, you know, if you had a good job, you could might be able to go and hide somewhere or not do too much. But I was a I was a <laughs> plasterer, so I'd be on the ceilings with jibboard over my head plastering and and uh, fixing them. So it was, it was you know, it was a it was a tough gig, but it was just you, you got used to it. That's just how it was, you know. Life. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. So um. Yeah, big. So back to back to Big Donny. Big Donny was um, um, a wonderful player. Like he played eighty minutes every week. He was just there was legend. He was a freak, and and he would ca- carry the ball. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a wild guess, but I'm gonna say you know in the twenties at least. You know, and he'd, and he'd make all these tackles. And Big Donny was a, a huge threat, and he ended up playing uh, went on the Invincibles tour um, to Great Britain and France in eighty two. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he was a prop for the for the Kangaroos. He didn't play any Test matches, although he should have. And he should have played a lot of Test matches for them. Um, but Donny was one of those guys that had a unbelievable long arms. So um, yeah. he was he was most probably the original bloke that should have worn um, high heels to stop his knuckles dragging along the ground. He was he was <laughs> yeah, he had some long arms on him. And um, I knew because I used to train with him, and we used to bo- do a lot of boxing and. Um, you know, I'd, we'd work really hard, and I'd have a big, big uh, medicine ball, big leather medicine ball bag, yeah. and um, he'd run in, he'd come flying, and I'd pull a bag out of the road, and he'd, he'd miss with it, and I'd run in and hit him on the head or something like that, and get back out. And one day I mistimed it, and he'd throw on the punch, and I'd, I'd pulled it out, and I went to go at his head again, and he just sort of whapped, and he's had this medicine ball, and just boom, just exploded in my hands, you know? and he was wow. standing there frothing at the gob. And he and he, I thought, geez, he's going to come after me. And I said, okay, that'll do us. We're going to have a share. And he was just standing. Like, well, <laughs> we got pretty lucky then. So, um, but he was. He, uh, we'd um, I used to pack behind Donny, and um, in the early days um, was Ronnie Willis the coach. Um, we'd, we'd, the big the big thing was the big bet was not if there was going to be a fight, but when it was going to be. It was the first scrum, second right. scrum, third scrum, and um, Donny would um, he'd started on the blind side. And then I'd um, I'd come in and uh, he'd drag his front row out of it, and I'd come and swing in and see what sort of damage we could do. So, um, yeah, that was that was how life was. And I know it sounds terrible nowadays when you when I talk about it out loud, you think, but that was just how it was. You know, that was yeah. the first, first ten minutes. The referee would put the whistle away. He wanted to sort the differences out. Then we start playing. <laughs> So did you enjoy that toughness and like being in those scrums where you just knew like shit was going to go down? Did you enjoy all that? Well, I don't know if you, you had no choice. <laughs> you know, that, that's what was going to happen, right? And um, and everybody else was prepared for it. So, you know, oh, yep. we used to spend a lot of time in the boxing gymnasium and stuff like that and, and training hard. Um, yeah. And it was just part and parcel, you know, like, um, yeah, it was, you know, like you see nowadays or you hear of nowadays the, 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 the um, NRL players go out and they get um, into, some, into some strife or something like that. Well, in, in my day, no one would have approached us as said anything um, really? out of out of because I would have got knocked out on the spot. So that's just how it was. So um, that was that was uh, life, you know, and 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 people knew that. So nothing happened. So that's just how it was. Brilliant. So uh, the speaking of toughness, what are some of the worst injuries you've had and had to play through? 
Uh, well, I had quite a few actually, um, believe it or not. Um, and 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 when I when I say these things, this is everybody in that era. That's just how it was, you know. Everybody, okay. like you, you're the fittest prior to the first trial game of the year, and after that, you carry something for most of the season. And and at the end of the year, when the semis and the grand final comes around, everyone's busted. You know, everyone's everyone's got some sort of complaint, and they're spending a lot of time with the physio. Uh, they're doing lots of remedial work to get themselves up. From some sometimes, you know, um, folks aren't unable to train, but they will go out and play in the semi, and, and that's that's quite common even today. You know, so yeah, um, so injuries, right? Um, I suppose uh, I've had lots of stitches. I, 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 I started off life as a obviously a native, um but I was really accident prone, so I was I was always going to the hospital on the holidays when um, getting stitches, um, falling out of trees. So I, I was quite quite um, used to um, going to the doctors and um, getting stitched up. So from a very early age, um, I'd um, I had some I had some horrendously frightening experiences um, in our backyard. I fell out of a tree tree uh, tree hut I was building one day with another guy. Yeah. And I was using a tomato steak as part of the flooring, and it fell and landed on his on his um, head, on his head, and the the point of bit of the steak sticking up, and I fell onto it, and I went straight straight through, and out it came out through my mouth. Wow. And, really? and, and I, I was I was with a mate, my mate, and he was just his eyes were this big, and he was in shock, and he and he ran ran for his life because the you know, blood pouring, and um, and I was I was kind of I was like a bit of shock. I was thinking. Or was he running away? I couldn't couldn't open my mouth because it was stuck through there. Oh wow! And um, yikes! So he's running up there, calling Mrs. Graham, Mrs. Graham. She, mum, mum's come running out and uh, walked out, and then she saw me. So she's running towards me, and she's and she's praying hail Marys as she's running towards me. And I just I thought mm, I'm going to die here for sure, you know. Um, but you know, um, I, I I must have fallen backwards in the. the Tomato steak, they, they grabbed it and pulled it out. And it was, look, it only required half a dozen stitches to close it. That wasn't, wasn't a big deal, but it must have looked horrible, you know? Well, it and, looked um, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that was sort of, that was sort of me, you know, I could go to a birthday party and there'd be a hide and seek or something like that. And I'd sprint around the corner or play t- t- Tiggy or Touch or whatever. And I'd run yep. headlong into a concrete lamppost and you have to go to the hospital. You know? And the old man used to was forever saying to me on the holidays, he'd sit me down and said, if I'm going to take you to hospital at any stage during these holidays, I'm going to give you a flogging. So um, one of the one of the, one of the, one of the um, my brother, we go up to Fibbon Road School, which wasn't far from where we lived. Um, and there's a big, uh, there used to be a big Norfolk Oak there, so we climbed to the top of Norfolk Oak. And yeah. um, anyway, um, my brother reckons he didn't, but it, um, I reckon he pushed me out of the tree. So as I was crashing through the branches on the way down, I, I've broken a branch and it's gone. Into my leg, um, and and ripped up the calf muscle. Right? And when I oh. got to the ground, and I used to get this feeling, you know, that there was there was something wrong. There was a major injury, and I got I had the feeling, and I was too, and I was too scared to look at my leg. And I said, "Oh, how does my leg look?" And he went, "Oh, you won't be, you won't be, you won't be bicycling home. I'll go and get your bike, and I'll hide it over there, so no one knocks it off, and I'll give you a lift home." So he he gave okay. me a lift home. So, and then he said, like, um, you know, Dad's told you about being injured. He's going to flog you. And I went, yeah. So he said, I'm going to stay around the side there. You have to go and go and see him yourself because otherwise I'm going to get a flog and pee. <laughs> so I walked to the back stairs, steps and I walked up the stairs and there was mum used to have a window uh, looking into the kitchen and was, the window was open. And I said, oh, mum. I said, thinking I, I might be able to get her to bandage it and, you know, might, I might not get a flog out of it. And I said, oh, mum, come and have a look at this. And she goes, oh, what? And I said, oh, look, I burnt myself. And she walked around the corner and saw it. But she bent down to see what it was, you know, and I'd sort of turn my legs so she could see the full extent of it. And she fainted. So she was lying oh. on the ground. And I was going, oh, shit. I was thinking, man. And then the old man's walked in the kitchen. He goes, hey, Mark, where's your mother? And I went, oh, she's out here, Dad. So he's come out to see his wife, my mother, fainted on the ground in front of me with this big gaping wound in my leg. You know? And he was just, anyway, he was not very happy. So he made me go and have, because I'd been playing, I had mud and shit so he made me go and have a bath, and he and he bathed it and cleaned it all up, and then he then he um, wrapped it up. And we went and sat in the um, hospital emergency room um, because it was like a Saturday or Sunday afternoon for like three yeah. hours. Yeah. And generally, I'd just you know, they'd, I'd come in with a 
something sticking out of me and they just take me straight in and, and fix me up, you know. And because when you come in and you're all in your Sunday best clothes and you're all neat and tidy and, you know, there's a little bit of blood dripping out of a band, it's no big deal, they can wait, you know. So after about three or four hours, they call me in and the doctor goes, oh, what's that, what happened? So I said, oh, I've fallen out of a tree and Francis had my leg and, you know, opened me, opened me up. And he goes, oh, yeah. He said, so he unstrapped it and he went, oh, man, he said, that's a major. He said, you need lots of stitches. You have stitches inside the wound, certain ones. Sort of thing. Okay. And he said, why didn't you just come as you were? And I said, I would have, but I was told I had to have a bath and get cleaned up. <laughs> like meeting the old man. And the old man said, you can wait till we get home. I've got another flog. I've got a flog for that too. <laughs> oh, no. But, but that was how it was, you know. That was just, it was no big deal, you know. Like, um, yeah. Oh, a couple of times, you know, I got I got hurt. And people were kind enough to pick me up off the road and take me to a hospital and then call my mother, who didn't drive, um, and tell her that, you know, um, I'd been injured and I'd be at the hospital. And then the old man would pick up the old lady and then he'd have to leave work to come and get me. And it was, it was just like, wow, it was a nightmare. It was, uh, and everyone that took me on holidays or I went with my mates somewhere, they were just waiting for something bad to happen. And, and it generally did. So to be injured wasn't such a big thing for me. You know, it was just, Okay. How it was, you know, and um, yeah, so it was to get stitches. You know, I'd have had hundreds and hundreds of stitches in my time already, but you know, not all from football, most of them from you know, no, that's great. Guys. It's nice yeah, to get so, some insight into your childhood, I love it. Yeah, yeah. no, well, look, you know, I, 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 I had the best family in the world, you know, three older, two older sisters and an older brother, and we were loved and cherished and had wonderful things and wonderful presents, and we were taught great things and manners, but it's just how it was, you know, and, and my old man wasn't yeah. wasn't mean or nasty, it was just how it was, you know, like the kids were the parents kids were the same. Were, <laughs> yeah, kids were seen oh, well. Yeah, it's just you know, but you um yeah. So anyway, so um being injured wasn't wasn't a huge deal for me. Um yeah. But um yeah I'd, I'd say if I saw I'd, I'd broken and dislocated my collarbone, um dislocated yeah. both shoulders, done Ooh, all the nasty. Packages. Yeah, that was oh, I see me um this shoulder, I've had it fixed now. I've had an operation, but um, I had um, I played three games with the, with this one dislocated because they said it had gone back in, and we just go, oh yeah. And you look in the mirror and go, it doesn't look like it's gone back in. And I go, yeah, that'll be right. It'll, it'll be a bit sore for a day or two. So I played yeah. three games, and I could I couldn't I was I had a, drove a manual car and like I couldn't change the gears. So every time I had to change the gears, I had to use me um, legs to you know grab the wheel and I'd reach across and oh my like, god. Crazy. So um, it was actually pretty dangerous. I never really thought about that. But, yeah, so I played three games of first grade as a captain of North Sydney with a dislocated shoulder. And um, and obviously when people ran at that shoulder, I'd have to try and use this shoulder, so I'd stick my head. Oh, in the wrong place. I was, I was, getting, I was getting knocked out all the time, you know? Yeah. And, um, so they sent me off to the doctors to see about my... Um, I was getting knocked out. And the doctor... Um, did you see that? How's that shoulder? He, he had my, I'd have my shirt off while I was doing these scans. And he looked at me and said, what's wrong with that shoulder? Well, I said, oh, I dislocated it, but it's gone back in. He said, who told you it's gone back in? We said, the people are footy. And they said, this hasn't gone back in. So they you know, pulled some people in, they held me down, and they, they put it in. So um, oh. that was good. It was no more pain. It was great. I could use it. I could, as, soon as, like, as soon as they did it, I just went, oh, what about that? And I hadn't been able to do that for weeks. You know? so, oh, my God. You're nuts. <laughs> Oh, look, it was just, it would it, it would happen to everybody. You know, it was not, I was nothing, yeah. nothing special. You know? um, it's, I once, it's crazy. I, I, once, I once woke up, uh, I once came to, actually, when they did fix his shoulder, they gave me a shoulder reversal. So it was a ball in a socket. Now yep. it's a socket and a ball. And it's all made out of time. Okay. So they chopped the top of your arm off and they chopped all the joints and they take the front delta out and the rear delta out and it's all, all done with the side delta work. So I've got a big massive wind down there, but it, it works good, it doesn't hurt. Well, occasionally when I do have the aggressiveness, but um it's most most probably around here that really is. Um so um yeah so nothing um I, I came to in the middle not in the middle but right at the end when they were when they were oh, really? the they had it and I sort of come to them ah oh, yeah and they must have wound up the gas again boom and I said yeah, you're not that guy out again yeah quite a few months later when I was getting you know treated I was seeing the doctor I said I came came to during during that and he said yeah he said generally we can give you stuff to so that you can't remember 
And he said, but yeah. um, we obviously didn't give you enough stuff because we've got to make sure that it all works, you know, so they're going to move it around. And so while the wound's open and the, they're going to have okay. to look at it all, make sure it's all, and which makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah? But I came yeah. to June, which was, that was really painful. Um, yeah. And then I came, I came, another time I came to was, uh, so I've been, we're playing um, Canberra, at down at Canberra. And um, Dean Lance was their captain. He was a really tough, hard little thing, a really good footy player. And um, he'd been he'd been injured and was lying on the back play and they were treating him. And um, I'd made a break and I'd thrown the ball out and um, he was drawing the full back and I was going to catch the ball and run over the post and score the, score the try. And just as I, just like, and just, that was the last thing I remember is that. And then the next thing I can remember is uh, the physio, who was a female, saying to our doctor in our dressing says, do you think that's straight enough? And he said, what, what's the point? He's going to get it broken next week anyway. And he was talking about the nose. And what had happened, as I was getting the ball, Dean Lance, did, he was up on his feet. And I, I, I just so looked and there was no one there. And then he got him up as I turned. And as I turned back, he just whacked, hit me. And, um, yeah, that was smashed me up pretty good. Um, did, I think it broke and dislocated my collarbone in that one. Yeah, so, um, so, so we had this doctor, right? So this doctor would go, um, he would when he first started with us. He was so. Oh, do you reckon you'd be able to play with those couple of stitches in your head? Like, Get out of the road, Sam. Of course, no worries. And then towards the end, after about six weeks, um, when I when I smashed all this up and popped me root cartilage and stuff, he'd come in and just the needle, just bam, 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 bam. He'd go, oh man. Oh, he said, right. Uh, one time I popped all my cartilages. Oh man, it was so bloody Mel Maniga land on top of me. Why wouldn't it? Have? Anyway, <laughs> Mel. Yeah, popped everything. It was actually Sam Backo's fault. Um, that it happened because oh, yep. I'd, I'd, um, I'd got Sam early in a really good line side tackle and it just was getting the ball and I thought I was, I was full of myself that day and later on in the game we kicked on long and Mel had gone back to pick the ball up and he'd come out and his bumper blokes off and, and I just flew at him and smashed him and he sort of caught me halfway and got me like so and I landed up on my back and he just landed on top of me and just smashed me up anyway oh. I get to the dressing room and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in agony you know, all your cartilage because I don't know if you've ever had cartilage problem but if you breathe or move, you know, the pain is astronomical. Um, and the cartilage is a thing between your ribs and, and they, they join here and around here. Anyway, um, so I put them all down here. So the doctor walks in, he goes, mate, I can fix that for you. He goes, there you go, you can go back out. And I said, you're bloody kidding, are you? And he said, what do you mean? You play with every bloody other thing. So I don't think you can play most of the time, but you do. And I said, well, I'm not going back out today, Sam. He's like, fair enough. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we changed it from a small old men and um, gentlemen to um, this um, bloke that just, you know, yeah, it was, um, but that was just how it was. And, you know, that was, that was, that was life, you know. It wasn't just me, it was how everybody was. Yeah, to everyone. So, uh, Tiari Tonoa, or Tonoa would like to know, what's the worst injury to heal and did it heal properly? Like, have you ever had anything that didn't quite oh. uh, get there? Mm, worst injury, yeah, good point. Um, yeah, uh, teeth, teeth were teeth don't heal. <laughs> you get you get them knocked, you get them knocked out, and uh, I've had them um, where they, they broke off in me in my gum line. I lost yeah. all my teeth, and I was wearing a mouth guard, and um, that was really? that was pain. Yeah, so I've come to and my mouth, and I went to put my mouth guard in, and, and then I was groggy, and I, oh, I wouldn't wouldn't fit, and I looked at them, and there's these teeth sitting in my front teeth, and four of them was just sitting in the oh, shit, sit them out. Yeah. I wouldn't go in again, so I, I, all my teeth had been jumbled up. So I pulled them around and got them. So I put my mouth guard back. In. And um, <laughs> every, time I, every time I sucked there, the teeth that was still in my gum, the, the nerves were exposed, obviously. And I was just like, whoa. You know? So I right. said to them, it was about half an hour to go in the game. And I said to the, to the, to the runner, to make, make sure that doctor's got some painkiller organized. So you know, when I come off at half time, oh, sorry, full time, I can, I can get into it. And um, I remember being very, we won the game. We beat Parramatta at Parramatta, a night game, um, in the wet from memory. It was kind of funny because I, I, I didn't mind playing Parramatta. They were, they were a good side to play, but they weren't um, they weren't cheap shot artists. They weren't dirty. Or, you know, I must have gone into a tackle. Um, and um, so it wouldn't have been my fault. But, um, yeah, it was um, – I was I – was un- I was – you know, like some sometimes you played sides that were – you knew it was coming um, yeah. and you had – you had to sort of steal yourself to make sure, you know, you'd say, you say, right, boys, 
everyone would be looking out for everybody. But against Parramatta, yep. you just had you had to play footy because they were good footy players. Yeah? So yeah. I'm not thinking anyone could have um, done this with Dennis. But um, yeah, talk about that. Like we, funny story, we played West at West at Lincoln Mobile. And Lincoln Mobile, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's got a bike track, a velodrome, okay. around. Yep. And yep. you just have to come out of the old, old stand. And they'd bring these, they called them races. They were like um, a cage and they had on wheels and they'd, they'd bring them out so the crowd couldn't get out here. And the crowd would be all spitting out here and throwing shit out here. And, and, uh, yeah, and we'd come, come down the race. Out through the race and on across the velodrome and out to the footy field, and there were West were already got West were already out there. And their captain was, um, oh, big ball, Dallas, Dallas, oh, he's, he's a pro, he's an Australian okay. player, big, nasty bloke. And, um, okay. he passed away the poor bass, he had a um, had a epilep fit in his nerves and he, he died. So he's he's here, so you know, give him a go, you know, mate, before we go out the field, and he's. And he spat on me. No way. I was just like, whoa. Whoa, it's odd. So, we're, yeah, so we're at it. We're, we're <laughs> at it now. So we're, we're, we're slugging it out before the game started. And um, <laughs> so the, they break us up and we go out and um, and we get the kickoff. And um, and the kicker said to me, who, who, do I kick, who do I kick into? I said, kick into that big fat bastard. He was a big man. So he's <laughs> caught, they've, someone's caught the ball and give it to him. And he's thundering in there. And I'm running flat out at him. And he's he's come fine and I just jump over the top and whap and I just smashed him with a great elbow and knocked him out. <laughs> and just as that happening, their second rower, um, see, he's jumped over. I'm just trying to think of his name. He's as I've as I've dropped him, he's jumped in and got me. And I've got a picture there of um, the game was maybe five seconds old, and both captains. We've got <laughs> my nose is like that, and <laughs> like blood pouring out of it. And he's lying on the ground, but you know he got up and played on, and um, as I did, and um, I think we won that game too. So it was, um, but that's oh, that, was, that was just that was footy, you know. That's that's how it was, and 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 look, oh, it was uh, it was just, and every game was like that, you know, like a mad crowd, and and if and look if you. If you, you know, one of the things I was really grateful for, you know, lots of times, it seemed, I heard you say, Sammy say this, you know, you'd play a game and not recall too much of it. And um, so you're thinking, gee, I, I hope it didn't embarrass me. Sir. Because, you know, you've got no, you aren't aware of what you're doing, or, you know. And I was, and um, I remember coming to a, in a hospital one time in, in North Sydney. And, um, and they said I was right to go. And I thought I was good. And I walked out. And um, I said, oh, where are we? And the, and the nurse said to me, oh, you're, you're on the north side, mate. And I was like, okay. And I thought, yeah, that's funny. We never played footy in Devonport and, and walked down the north side. Yeah. So I walked out and I walked into the car park and the CEO of the club walked up to me and he said, oh, thank God you're okay. And I went, oh, yeah. And it all came back to me like that. You know, because I was in North City, not in, I wasn't in Auckland. Um, I had a family. I played for the Bears. But like three strides ago, I had not a clue. You know? So and, wow. and, and you think... In that period of time, I hope I haven't done or, or said something that's inappropriate or, you know, or okay. not me. You know? and, and, you know, like you go, um, so, so, said them, so how'd we go? Because I had no reference to the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, we won. But he said, we had, mate, geez, you took your time today. You know, you just about left it to the last 10 minutes before you, before you um, scored a couple. And I went, oh, okay. So, and, and I said, so. So what happened? So they got you with an elbow early on, and you just you, know, you played on and played on, and finally you came good. I went, okay. And so why are my hands so sore? And they said, oh, you attacked one of the guys in the dressing rooms, and um, he ducked and weaved, and you were that angry that you that about um, because we took you off that you were punching the walls in the dressing room, and then um, we just let you be until you stopped punching them. So okay, well that'll that'll account for my hands, you know. So but I explain I just, it. <laughs> And I, by the same token, I could have just laid on the ground and cried like a baby, and and had no no idea. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> thankful. Thankful I never did that. So well, I hope I didn't do that anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you didn't. Okay, Kane Reed wants to know how did you play with a broken ankle? Oh, um, it, it wasn't broken. I torn the ligaments off it. So, um, but Ooh, it's so, same 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 result. You know, you, you need to have it in plaster, and you need to be immobilized for like. Six eight weeks or something like that. So um, and that happened uh, in the first test in eighty four, five. 
in England. Yeah, so it was, um, we're having a great day. We're, we're going good. Um, and um, the Pommies were getting stuck in. And um, anyway, we carried the ball and I was standing in a tackle. And they sort of got me and it twisted me. And, and yeah, I could hear, hear the sound of my ankles popping, you know. Um, and so um, I got up to play the ball, and that was, it was, you know, I knew I was pretty well born. And we didn't have a, at that stage, we didn't have a doctor with us that time. Oh, really? You know, mixed pain pills. And um, so it was just about half time. So I went off, and Lowy said, mate, you, you know, you can't, you can't go off. You've got to stay on. Oh, and just prior to that, um, so, um, this drummer has got me with an elbow in the face and broke my cheekbone. Oh, wow. Or, orbital bone, yeah. And my face was all swelled up. Yeah. And um, so he said, oh, you know, you'll have to go back out. And I said, okay. So I went back out. But the, the first scrum came around, I, was, I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't walk on a little and push. Oh, so yeah. I came with. And then we, um, so we lost, we won that game. Kurt put um, James Little way down the blind side with the finisher, James the finisher. Great ball, yeah. and um, we ended up winning the game. It was a great game, and um, well done, well done. Yeah, yeah. so uh, so then we go to the second test, and I can't play because I'm busted, and um, yeah. So and we lose, we lose badly. So um, the third test, Lowy comes in after we lose, lose the second. He said, "Mate, you're playing. Don't care. You're just going to have to tough it out. We'll give you the ice. We'll get the physio." <laughs> oh, I said, "Yeah, but mate, you don't understand. It's not going to grow back." You know? He said, "No, no, it'll grow back in time, and it's only pain." And um, yeah, so. Um, boy, I was, I was very concerned I was going to let everyone down and um, we had, the doctor flew in um, and he gave me some painkillers prior to the game but you know prior to that the physio I was with the physio and the physio I just have ice on it all the time and he'd strap it go out and yeah. train um, and also it was to give the boys um, confidence that, you know, that, that we were going to play play good and, and I'd be there and um, I was really really um, concerned that I was going to let everybody down, but you know it worked out all right. Um, and I can remember um, Dr. Lloyd Drake, champion bloke. He said to me, "Mate, look, I've got, you'll be right. You won't be able to feel it." He said, um, "So I'm going to give you the painkiller." So they strapped me. Then they he gave me the painkiller through the strapping, and then they gave me some more at half time. And um, I lasted the whole game. But he said to me, uh, "Don't worry." He said, um, "After the game finishes." He said, we've got an ambulance waiting for you. We'll get all you. We've already packed your gear up and we're going to put you in the ambulance with your gear and they're going to take you straight to hospital. And I was I, I, I saying to myself, well, I didn't say anything, but I thought, is that meant to, was that meant to help me? You know, because I was thinking, well, that's good. I'll finish the game, I can go to hospital. But, uh, yeah. Should anyway, probably be playing, really. <laughs> you need so, a bloody uh, ambulance. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that happened. and look, Graham Graham Lowe was champion, one of one of the all time you know great people. I don't know. He he wrote me a letter years later, and um, he said that um, um, he was because he just you know him he, he knew I was, wanted to stay, and I'd stay regardless whether I, whether he was asking me or not. I'll stay. And um, um, he's, he's, he wrote me a letter, you know, basically um, apologising for you know. Leave me out there when he basically shouldn't. Have. And um, I, I, I rang him and said, "Mate, look, you know you've got this all wrong. I, 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 I was, um, I was very pleased and honoured that you that thought I could still contribute, even even if I was busted. So, you know, I, and I expected to be able to do that because that's that was my role. You know, as a captain, I was, I was, a, I was um, the guy that was meant to be out there. So I was only too pleased to do that. So, um, amazing. Yeah." Yeah, that was that was. I've got to say that was that was painful. Eh? And then when I yeah. got, the, I got, I got to the hospital, and they went, "Well, mate, we can put it in plaster, we can strap it up, um, but you can't. That's it. You're not. You can't play anymore." And so that I pulled out of the, of the rest of the tour. So um, they said, "Look, it's going to be sore and painful for six to eight weeks. Don't get on it. If you, the more you get on it, the, the worse it's going to be." So um, I got back to the room, um, bottle of whiskey in hand. All the boys when they came. For a drink afterwards, we'll have a bottle of whiskey and we'd have um, just, you know, boat little you know, shot races and we'll bring our yeah. families and um, um, have, a, have a good night. And um, yeah, yeah, so that was it. Yeah, so it was. Wow. But, you know, having said that, you know, Gary Prome played, um, I think, their whole series with, with, a, with a thumb that, that um, if it wasn't strapped, it was just, it would lie in the palm of his hand. It was that badly broken. 
So, you know, it was just, oh, it was just how things were, you know. Like, and, and, <laughs> oh, well. And, 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 and if you didn't, if you didn't, if you didn't, um, um, like if you got knocked out and went off, you, your own teammates would be calling you a cat. You know, they'd, they'd be, <laughs> be disgusted in you, um, you know, to, 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 to try and draw a penalty because someone um, bent your neck or something like that. You were a dead set cat. You know, like I watched him do it. I think, God, I've seen him do it on TV. Well, you're at the game now. <laughs> and, and I'm embarrassed for them. I think, oh, you, you know, and yeah. then they taught to, um, to, taught to, um, um, to do that, you know, to try and draw a penalty. But, you know, there was, there was uh, certainly rules of honour in that you didn't, you didn't show you were injured or you didn't show you were, um, I can remember sitting in the dressing room after the first test and, um, Someone, one of, the, one of the newspapers or something, they tried to get a picture of me with, you know, because I was like a few moments hidden me. And um, um, how he got in the ratings, no, you know, you're not doing that. So, yeah. um, and, and well, so, fair enough, but anyway. So, but, you know, so you weren't allowed to say, like, if you had a, if you had a busted hand, well, you strap both hands because otherwise you were saying, "Oh, come, come and jump on this hand because it's so yeah. you know what I mean? So it was, exactly. it was, it was old days, you know. It was, it was um, yeah. different. Yes, it was. So, Flash Henry Rawiri wants to know what's it like being tougher than Chuck Norris. <laughs> I only wish. Um, look, I, I, I played with, I played with, you know, tough, tough. You talk about. I suppose it depends on. What, what your definition of tough is, is is tough being able to hold your hands up, is tough being able to um, go through pain, is tough is tough just doing what you're meant to do regardless of what they're doing to you. you know? So there's lots of versions of tough. Um, yeah. But I, I play with some really really tough people, you know, and and and, and most of them were most of them were um, people that were footy players. Yeah, you know, and they, they Shane Dowsett, who God, may God rest his soul. Who passed away recently? He he was one of the toughest, hardest people ever. You know, and he was a halfback, and um, he would. I uh, saw so, so him. He played one day with a, he, um, had a compound fracture of the collarbone and stuck out like that. And he had a, sh- and to see it, I had to pull his shoulder pads off. And I went, mate, no, please. I said, mate, you're going off. He said, no. He said, oh, I'll just, um, I'll play five eight. So we fed the scrum. We lost the ball. He crashed tackled the winger that came in off the back of the scrum. And the yeah. referee, and I, and I went to him against him, mate, you've got to go off. And he's going, no, he said, there's, but I'll, I'll be all right. And the, and the referee saw it and said, mate, I'm going to stop the game. You're, I'm going to send you off unless you go off. And, and he went off. He, he was back playing in about three weeks. It was wow. just, man, it was, it was tough. Mate. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was extraordinarily tough. Right? We played a game against uh, Western Suburbs in Carlow Park. In the old days, um, yeah, the, the champion Auckland side would play a, a ARL side on New South Wales rugby league side yep. that had been picked the year before. And we played Western Suburbs, and um, I'd lost the game for us because I should have passed the ball, but I took the defensive line on. And, and um, anyway, the, in the last minute, and we lost. Um, but after the game, we're all sitting around having a beer, and um, Shane's his voice is beside Shane in the dressing room, and um, Peter Peter Rasmussen was never far from us, and. Um, we we're sitting there having a beer and a cigarette, and um, he's going, and I went, this is going to get ugly. And we said, oh, what's up? He said, oh, I'm going to take the sock off now. And he took his sock off, and just about the whole of his calf came off. And it's just oh. like, whoa. So what happened to you? He said, they, they, like that someone said, started him, dug his and just dripping it down his leg. Oh, it was horrendous. And um, I said, oh, and, you know, when you get something that deep, it doesn't seem to bleed a lot. It just, it's, it's not like a nick. It's, it's like a gash, you know. And um, yeah, and he and he took his sock off and you know, caused mayhem and it was just. But he had that he had that happen in the first half and he played the whole game. Was, there is having a beer. So oh. so you know, there was still standard. So just getting just getting sat on your bum that was no big deal, you know, just because you lost a tooth or got your nose back. And shit, if you came off for that, you know, no one had ever talked to you again. You know, so there was uh, and it just uh, that's how that's how things work. I love it. Okay, so uh, Floyd Kingy wants to know: Do your footy injuries affect you today? Um, good question. Um, my wife would mostly say that I'm. Um, um, she actually quite interesting. I um, went and did a memory test because she said that um, she felt I was um, not. You know, I, you know, because you know, the big thing there was that um, 
early onset Alzheimer's and stuff like that and dementia and yep. stuff like that, which is a horrible, obviously, thing. And, and lots of my people I played with and against have um, have it or and or passed, which is a terrible thing. And um, but I so I went and did this, you know, I had I get a check up every year on my birthday in September. And I get all my blood tests and all that sort of stuff done. And so I asked for this memory test for, and some, some scans. And these the scans came back good. A couple of little things, but nothing to worry about. And um, yep. so I had to do this memory test. And I did the memory test. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, um, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but I'm, I'm not stupid either. So you know, I, I like doing puzzles and Sudokus and, you know, that's sort of word, word yep. games and stuff like that. And those apparently help you in it, to do it anyway. And training it obviously helps. And you know, eating the right food, looking after yourself. So, um, so I did this memory test, and I got ninety six. And when I and I said, oh, I'm, I said, oh, I didn't set a pass. Is it out of three hundred? And I failed miserably. You know what? And it's, it was out of a hundred. And the, and the doctor right. said to me, um, doctor said, well, he said that's remarkable. He said I did this test last week, and he said well, I got eighty two. So, and my wife was happened to be present. She said to me, God bless her. She said, so you're telling me there's nothing wrong with his memory? He said, he said. Like he's obviously there's nothing nothing wrong with, it, with his memory at all, and she said, "So how come he doesn't do those things?" I said, "We'll have to ask him because she leaves me stuff to do, and I just forget to do them." So yeah, yeah said, husbands are the best sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "I don't want to bait the fence." He said, "He said he threw me right under the bus." He said, "If he's not doing them, it's not because he's forgotten them." Exactly. <laughs> so, oh, but, yeah, no, so. Oh, no, pretty good. I've, I had a bad neck for ages. Um, as Sammy said, he got his um, fused, and I've had mine. Um, I lost the use of this arm for like three months. Um, okay. It just hung by my side. And um, I could use my hands, but I couldn't actually raise my arm. So um, they said it was something to do with my neck. And um, so I got that fixed. And they put a cage around it, and they put some uh, discs and vertebrae, some artificial ones in. Perfect. It works great. Um, I don't. Um, I still get a little bit of pain, especially if overhead pressing hurts. Um, yeah. uh, but I had um, shoulder reversal, as I told you before, I had that done. So that's sort of that's that's been good. Um, you know, I've got bits of me that um, don't don't work right. I've got this arm's a bit longer than this one because of the the, the joint and yeah. that. Uh, and that I'm I'm thinking that's why my golf so bad. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, <laughs> We're um, going with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> They had me down for a, a knee replacement, um, but I just changed my diet. My, my wife changed her diet. She's uh, she's done another degree in nutrition, so um, uh, I just changed my diet. No gluten, no dairy, no sugar, or very little, and um, fine. Yeah, no no more problems. I, when I first retired four or five years ago, I, I was eating and drinking all the time because I didn't have night shifts anymore. You know? So I, I could have a drink every night. I could have ice cream every night, you know? and. Yep. Um, I was in pain the whole time, and uh, the explanation from the doctors was that my inflammatory levels were just through the roof. Right. And yep. in order to in order to stop that, they were giving me you know massive um, doses of painkillers and nerve blockers and stuff like that, which are really bad for you, and especially bad for your stomach. And um, so I followed my, my wife's um, advice, and for this goal, I, was, I, went, I sort of lost um, just about eight and a half kilos in. Four weeks or something like that. And yeah, that's was, good, yeah. Yeah, and, and, me, and I was never hungry. Never hungry. Yeah. And all, this, all the stuff that they, you know, that you eat, that you, that's bad for you, it's got stuff in it that makes you want to eat more of it, you know. Um, so yeah. you just poison. So it worked out good. So I'm, I've got some pretty lucky. Of, um, um, I've got one rib case that's sort of shaped like that and one that's shaped like that. But pretty much pretty good. I, I reckon I, for the things that I've... I've done to myself. I've gone pretty good. I will take that. Nice. Okay, so uh, moving on to the end of your Bears days, um, what made you leave the North Sydney Bears and move off to the UK? So how did all that come about? Okay. Um, well, it's sort of, I've been there for a long time and I've, I've endured uh, lots of uh, – like we, had, we had a good enough side most of the time they were to, to go to the semis, you know, if not further, but we were always um, – Pretty much always our, our administration generally, um, you know, there's the old, old saying if your administration is not right, you know, the, the free thing can't, can't be successful. And that was yep. pretty much the case of the Bears. You know, was, um, I had lots of, um, lots, I had a number of um, 
run-ins with them. And um, at, at the end, I just basically had enough. And I, I, so I'll go, I'd, I'd, I'd always wanted to play in Wembley. So I thought, you know, maybe I can get over yeah. there and play with the club and, and go to Wembley. So uh, I think Wakefield had just come up from a, a division down and um, they were eligible to play in the top grade. And um, they brought, um, you know, amongst others, um, Brent Todd, um, oh, the Zip Zip Man, Steve Eller, um, or James Lulloy. We had some, we had some good players, and they already had some players. Good players. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it was, a, it was a good opportunity to go to England and um, and have a look at the place. Um, so yeah, uh-huh. it was. Uh, that's basically it. I, you know, I'd had, um, I'd had some um, uh, runners. Norston offered me a contract because I was, I was, I was sort of the age where. I was sort of a, pretty much uncoachable, I suppose. I'd you know, been there and done that and seen lots of things. I'd, I'd been through lots of things. And if, if the coach said or did something stupid, I'd just be in the room. And I didn't care if there was you know, listening. I'd, I'd tell them what I thought of them. And, um, so yeah. it made it difficult, obviously, to um, to run a club. With, um, you could say I was quite dominant. And, um, yeah, so and, and it was mostly good for them. It was good for me. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm jumping a little bit. Further ahead, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, a test match you played in. Uh, but since we're talking about Wakefield, um, Sonny Fakado wants to know, and I also want to know, uh, why did you leave Wakefield so soon, only 14 games into a three-year contract? Uh, I suppose long story short, um, uh, they did something that, that I didn't agree with. And um, me being me, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, if I don't agree with it, I'm, you're not going to have to find out by reading about it. I'm, I'm going to be telling you in your face. And um, so um, a great, very good friend of mine um, was injured and um, he did his knee and uh, they basically said they weren't going to um, pay for the surgery and that he only, he was only a, a forward anyway. Um, and uh, old Todd. And, uh, yes, old Brent Todd. Is that the guy? Yeah, yeah. Brent Todd. And he didn't score. Yeah. He didn't score and they said he didn't score any tries. So I said, you don't understand. Like, he stands in the middle of the park, gets us to boil the scrum, being a good prop. He's, he defends the middle of the park. He gets his go forward. He plays the ball quickly. And I can play off the back of him. And then the, one of them goes, um, yeah, but you haven't scored any tries either. And I went, yeah, but people I pass the ball do generally score on tries. I said, there's a bloke the other week there. He scored four tries. I passed him the ball three times. He ran a total of maybe three metres to score three tries. And I was a bloke that needed the stitches afterwards, but you gave him the man of the match. I said, no, that's not my fault. All he did was catch the ball. I said, well, you know, someone in the, said, you could have scored those tries, and you see, you know. And I said, you know, that, that our, my second row partner, I can't think of his name. Nice fella, big, big, big poppy bloke. And I said, he'll play, for, he'll play for Great Britain this year. And I said, yeah. He said, you know why? Because I'm passing the ball, mate. And he went, yeah. oh, yeah, well, I know that, but. I said, so you know, he hasn't broken the line at all. I've broken the line. I'm the bloke passing the ball. And I pass him the ball when I get to the fullback. And he's the bloke that's running, you know, 60 metres at a time. And they went, yeah, he'll play for play for Great Britain. I said, you don't understand it, do you? And they were sort of like, so, you know, I was, anyway, so the toddy thing was uh, pushed me over the limit. I, I was trying to, I thought I had pneumonia at the time too. I was, I was coughing and spluttering a bit. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, and, and I've got no regrets. So, yeah. Um, I had a great time in England. I had the, they, were, they were really good blokes. We had a couple of really big games over there. We um, yeah. beat Wigan at um, our, our home ground, um, and that was a massive, massive occasion. And um, yeah, I went and had a beer with Lowy afterwards, and um, he was he was fuming because he had like an international side. He had he had the best of the best. You know? and they could have just swapped the Wigan jerseys for the Great Britain jerseys, most of the time. You know? wow. and that, the nations. And he said to me. Um, afterwards, he said, How you feeling? I said, Yeah, pretty good, mate. Why? And he said, Well, he wouldn't be feeling that good if they'd have done what I told him to do. <laughs> I said, No, <laughs> I said, Because a couple of them did try. He says, Yeah, and that's why we're in the pub now because they're in the hospital. We're waiting for them. I said, Oh, well, there you go. So, well, do you want a beer? He said, Yes. Yeah. So, we had a beer. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Okay, so the match that I want to talk about uh, during your test career, uh, 1985, you come up against the star studded kangaroo side, you know. Packed full of your Mal Meningas, Wayne Pierce, Fatty Borden, you know, all the all the guns. And you guys beat them 18 nil, you know, with with quite a few provincial players in your side. Like you weren't like yeah. as stacked as Australia yeah. on paper, definitely not. And you guys yeah. won 18 nil. That's amazing. So tell us about it's, that game. Yeah, it was um 
Well, you know, I suppose the, the fact of the matter, Dave, is that we should have most probably won the first two tests. You know, this is a, that was the third test we won. Um, yeah. We had un- unbelievable support. Um, we the first test we played at um, Lang Park, and I got cleaned up early, so I'd um, I uh, only sort of I think made it to just after half time. And I'd, when I say just after half time, maybe a minute or two after half time, um, I got um, I got cleaned up good. But yeah, there was, that was one of those occasions where where geez, you could have done anything, and. Um, um, the commentator said, you know, I, you know, I got cleaned up and they got me up and I played on and um, I apparently put up a few bombs. And um, was, you know, when people were telling me I was putting up bombs, I was going, What? You're on drugs. I said, No, you put bombs up. So I went ahead of it. There's me putting bombs up. But they, they, were, they were good bombs. Um, you know, slipping, you know, slipped a couple of balls away and, you know, tackled. And, and uh, but, but I just, whatever was keeping me going, just stopped after half time, and I, apparently I went out, and we kicked off, and I was just standing there at halfway, and and they just came out and let, let me off, and then uh, um, I, I got better as the game went on, but I, was, I mean I was sitting on the sideline, so and we only just got beat, I think twenty twenty six to twenty, something like that. So okay. um, again, with lots of, lots of domestic players on the sideline, yeah? and and not saying so, uh, you know, they were guys that played at home, but they were good footy players, you know. They were good, uh, weren't they? They were good yeah. footy. And um, just because they didn't play in Australia or England didn't make them bad players, they were, they were good footy players. And we, so we had a really good side. And um, the second test we lost in the last minute, I reckon, of the game. Oh, that hurts. Um, oh, that was just, you know, we were oh, sad. We were just, I mean, we didn't, train for two, we didn't train for two days after. Everyone was just walking around with their heads down and oh, just, really? it was just, you know, we were beside ourselves. And um, I can remember we had a team meeting and, and um, I got up to speak and I just said, "Yeah, man, we we think we're we're a really good side and we think we can play footy, and and I think we are too." And I, but you know, we lose the next one. We lost three. No, we we had a good side. You know? we're, we're better than what we're showing. We, we sure we need a little bit of luck, as you said. The Australian Australian side is a good one, and I, I don't think there's ever been a bad one. To tell you the truth, um, yeah, so, true. yeah. So so um yeah so you know and it sort of struck home with everybody, you know, and then Graham. Ben Graham, like, he, he got on the phone to the, one of the big radio stations in town and he said that we were going to walk Queen Street before the, the, set the Friday before the test about, you know, gave them the time to show the time. And we were like, oh, no, that'd be terrible. We'll, we'll be getting abused by people because we've let everyone down. We've lost, you know, we've lost two games. By well, the skin of our teeth, we were right in the game, obviously. Um, but, yeah, it was, you know, we were like, oh, man, are you sure? No, he said, it'll be good. It'll, it'll do you good. And we walked down Queen Street and people were so... Gracious and happy and adoring and yeah. proud. And it was just like it was, you know, it was all those things. I and mean, just all of a sudden, we started. We were, we were trying to hide under the footpath, but when we finished, we were ten foot tall and bulletproof. And it was just, you know, the traffic stopped as we walked down the sidewalk, and you know, people were coming up and were getting autographs and building signs. Yeah. Stopped, you know, people that were building uh, high rises. There was all works hanging out and cheering, and it was just a marvelous experience. One of the most uplifting things I reckon ever. And um, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, so that to um, to um, yeah, to, yeah, so we 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 trained and we trained well, and um, yeah, we had a good squad. We made, as I said, we should have actually won three one, but anyway, we turned up and uh, Mark Elia said to me, um, no, how he said to me, do you reckon we should do the harker before the game? And I said no. I said no, because in the old days you didn't hark him at home. No one harkened. You only harkened when you were away. Okay. Um, so, um, and that was, that was like protocol, you know? So, okay. Uh, so I said to him, no, but, I, but if we, we win, we'll hark it then. He said, everyone's happy with that. And then yep. um, and Mark Healy approached me. He said, you know, you reckon after, because, you know, they'd announce you, you'd run out one at a time generally. Okay. And yep. You'd run out and you'd stand there and then the next bucket would go out and the, and the Aussies and you'd go like that. Then the crowd would clap or boo or whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> Um, and we had great support, obviously. And after that, part of the kickoff, um, Mark had suggested we run to the terraces and to the railway stand and, and like give the crowd a clap and yep. show our appreciation for their support, you know. And um, the crowd, oh, we were running towards them and we were clapping, and they just stood as one. And I was like to the boys, what did I do? No, no closer, because I thought they were coming on the park. It was just this huge audience, you know. And we did the other side and was... Um, 
Yeah, it was the place is on fire from the kickoff, <laughs> which I think I, I think I dropped the ball from the kickoff, but um, oh, uh, not, a, not, not a bad time to defend when you're full of you know full of boom and vitality. So, um, but yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, and, and not only to to win, but to win eighteen nil to keep them. Yeah, alive. that nil is awesome. And, and yeah. as you said, you know, we had we had um, a lot of domestic players, plugs that played in Christchurch and Auckland and Wellington the weekend before, you know, so yeah, it was, it was a big deal, yeah, it was a good deal. Yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. So 1995 and 96, you were inducted into the New Zealand Rugby League Legends of League and New Zealand Sports Hall of Fame. So how did that make you feel receiving such amazing accolades? Yeah, um, yeah, great. I mean, I've been, I've been hugely lucky in my, in my football life and um, yeah, throughout my life too. But um, yeah, I, it, um, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know if it sounds weird, but it's just people's opinions. You know, yeah. some, someone, a group of people got together and said, yeah, we'll do that. And, and, and look, I'm not unhappy. I'm, I'm very, very pleased that they, they did. And, and uh, But um, sort of not like a goal, if you know what I mean. It's not. It's just yeah. someone's opinion at the end of the day. You know, like me, I'd say, um, um, you, know, you, got, you got me in the match today, Mark. And I'd go, bullshit. So I, I made three tackles and set up a couple of tries and did nothing, you know. Why would I get yeah. down the back? And then they go, no, you're getting it. Again. You know what I mean? So okay. um, it, it's I'm hugely thankful and I'm very grateful that it happened to me. But um, you know, like say say um, say you didn't win an award. Well, that's that's fine too because it's only someone's opinion. It doesn't mean you're a good or bad player. It's just someone's opinion. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, totally, totally. So let's move on to your coaching career. Where 1999, you signed with the the Warriors as head coach. Um, so what was your uh, like the the journey, the short version of getting to the Warriors? Uh, so what was your pathway you took to get there? Okay, um, so uh, well, I was coaching Manly in the early 90s, and um, he had a bit of a turn. And I went up to see him at hospital. I heard that he had a turn, and he said to me while I was up there, he said, "Mate, can you help me with um, Manly?" and um, so I started coaching over there with him. And so I was an assistant over there. And then uh, for, then the next year, he got ill and they brought Bob Fulton in. And he, he maintained it. So I was, I was uh, his, his um, assistant. And so uh, I had two years there. And then I went to North Sydney. And I did two years coaching there. Okay. And then I went from there to the Cowboys. Uh, Graham got the job up there. So I went up, back up there with him. And I did three years up there. He did a year with him and two years with Timmy Sheen. So... I've done seven years of assistant coaching um, under Graham Lowe, Bob Fulton, and Timmy Sheens, oh, and Peter Louis. I've done seven years of, assist- of coaching, you know, um, in the last uh, last three as a full-time professional under Timmy Sheens, who was a wonderful guy and a great success, obviously. And, you know, yeah. Fulton um, um, and Sheens, you both won premierships, and Graham Lowe, and, you know, lit, lit the place up and... Um, he you know, coached Queensland, he coached in England, Wigan, been very successful, coached in New Zealand, coached um, yeah. North um, Devils for the Premiership. So, you know, these are these are people that were, knew their stuff. Um, Peter Lewis was a really good bloke in North Sydney, coached with him. Um, so, yeah, I was I'd sort of, I was pretty pretty sure I could do the job. Um, yeah. And, and to get a chance to, to go back home to the Warriors, um, who had been hugely unsuccessful, and, and that was the year that um, there was 18 teams in the comp in yep. '98. So they had the Adelaide Rams and the Perth. Um, yep, that was their last season in the comp. Yeah, that's right. So uh, they'd come second last in 18 team comp. So um, and they had had virtually a Kiwi side, and um, I was thought, wow, you know, an opportunity to look. There's good players amongst them. It's an opportunity to coach that sort of class of player. Um, no. and, I, and I thought I could improve the matter. So I, um, with, with what I'd picked up along the road, obviously, um, um, their size, their speed, athleticism, I thought we could, we could do something with them. And, um, yeah, so I, I jumped at the chance, really. And um, uh, having having seen their roster, I said um, that I felt that I, if I didn't get them to see me within two years, I'd resign. Um, okay. And, and that, that actually happened. I didn't, so I did. Yeah, crazy. So, um, so what what were the things that uh, you brought to the Warriors? Like, what was your approach to coaching the Warriors? Because they've always been like the warrior ball team, you know, where they throw it around and do a bit of fancy stuff, but it didn't always come off. 
And, uh, you know, how did you come in and think, right, how am I going to coach this side? Oh, you know, the other big thing that most, um, you know, you, you've, got to, you've got to have the basics down. You know, you've got to understand what, what it's all about, what you're trying to do. And um, and I and I knew me, and I knew that if I spent a lot of time with them on the video, they would hate me because I would tell them that they were really bad. So um, I didn't do too much video work with them, but uh, we did lots and lots of skill work and lots of patting them on the back. And, you know, we had, we had a good crew there. Like, um, we had, sorry, before we actually started doing too much training, a lot of the Kiwis left that I, that I thought were there on the roster. Yeah, so then they'd, they'd, uh, they'd left. So we, we, we had some big holes um, in the in the organisation. But we we, you know, we had some good players too, but they're only very young. So, um, um, it, and that was a big thing was to bring those young guys through. And, and um, you know, they were unsuccessful with, um, all these Kiwis, yeah. and they were should have been Stone Mother's last, I suppose, when, when they all left, left if, they, you know, if they were the calibre um, of yep. people. So, you know, we, we did lots of skill work, and I've always been a big believer in skills and um, good, you know, the, the best players have the best skills. Yeah. Pretty simple, really. And uh, so we did we, we did 45 minutes of um, slips, catches, ball handling, bad passing, um, you know, understanding what, what hold around, how to make a gap, how to, well, all, that, all the simple stuff, and then we do lots of um, lots of um, well, I suppose, intense physical work. And you know, we had like Mike McLennan, he was a great coach in Auckland, he'd been coaching St. Helens very successfully. Um, yeah. Trevor Clark was a great strength and conditioning coach, Sammy Panapa, who's his offsider. Um, um, Huey McGowan was our football manager, Trevor McEwen was our CEO. So, we, we they had people that, that knew their way around footy, and um, so you know, we um. I'm not sure where we came that first year, but it wasn't that far out. Um, it was top eight at that stage. So we weren't that far outside it. So um, we were half a chance the next year with the, the people that were blooded. So, uh, but yeah. it didn't work out. Lots of injury. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, was there any, like, did you have to be quite tough like, when you came in, like, because of the standard of some of the players that maybe not pulling their weight? So I had a story from Sid Eri here saying that, um, you came into the team saying, I'm here to coach. I don't select the team. But if you've got anything to say about my coaching or anything like that, you can come see me and we'll go sort it out out the back. <laughs> and needless to say, no one questioned your coaching ability. But Sid also no. wanted to say that you're an absolutely beautiful human and an awesome coach. And thank you for giving back to our game, Matu Mark. Oh, that was very nice of him. And he's a wonderful man. Um, he had a really bad injury. It was really, um, he, he, um, he didn't um, fulfill his his contract there or, or his, you know, get what he needed to, I suppose. But he's a wonderful player and a great fellow. And I follow him on Facebook with his, uh, yeah. all his, uh, all his kai, but, you know, his uh, he Molly. His kai he's, he's he's one, yeah, and he, he had a great, um, I think yesterday, he had a great tour with all his um, kids and their kids. So it was uh, set to nice music. And I watched that. I felt very proud. Um, but yeah, like some of them, uh, and that wouldn't have happened. I don't think that would have happened. It was, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would not do something like that. I I feel pretty confident. No. Um, but yeah, you know, like um, I, I, you know, if they wanted to see if they could, um, I remember someone bagged me about me having a one ad one day. Um, we had my shirt off, my coaching, and one of them said, um, "Good on your one ad." And uh, I said, "Okay, um, everyone, everyone, get on the ground. We're gonna, you're going to do sit ups with me, and we're going to see who's got the one ad when the when we finish." So we did a thousand straight off the bat. And I made the conditioning staff and the other coaches make sure that everyone kept up with me. And I sat yep. up and I said, "Have you got anything more to say?" To the bloke that said the one up, and everyone just said, "Mate, you open your mouth, and we're going to shut up for you." And that was that. So um, we're knowing there was no more, no, no more one ad calls. So, um, but yeah, no, look, I, 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 you know, look, I, I, that was, I, um, you know, one of the things. If I lost it at half time, which which I could do. Um, <laughs> I, would make, I would make sure that that didn't happen for another couple of weeks at least, you know. And if I, yep. um, you know, I was, we were coaching, I was playing, we were playing um, Canberra there at one stage in Auckland, and we had, you know, hardly any crowd. I'm not sure, maybe it was most from the second year. And, and we went in at half time, and I remember saying to the boys, Look, you, you guys are so much better than them. You know, you just, you know, you pat yourselves on the back, you know, we're, we're losing by plenty, but you guys can play. I said, Yeah, those poor bastards that come and pay the money. You know, they don't deserve this, and I know you can play. This is, you know, pull your fingers out. You know, like start doing what you're meant to do. You know, and um, and we were down by twenty, and we won by twenty. 
it was just, you know they 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 could play oh, yeah. they, they, were, they were just um they, they some of the boys lacked a bit of belief but you know by the same token with all the, a lot of the Kiwis um departing through injury and and loss of form or or, what, or some of them just wanted to go you know they just they'd had enough you know, before I took over so it's sweet and I didn't want anyone that didn't want to be there and um and yeah we so we lost some you know really really good footy players um so we had to get young fellows into to um yeah replace them and um luckily I'd, I'd had all that all those years of experience and all those um all those um I suppose standards from from different organisations I'd worked for, so I knew what um, good props should be able to squat and bench and how how hard they should be able to um, run and you know what's what the recovery rate should be like, and I had that all in every position. And um, okay, yeah. So we'd, you know, we'd we'd go and um, someone would say oh, this kid can play, so we'd put him through the paces and go, yeah, he can, and he's he's athletically gifted. Some of them, some of them were that athletically gifted. That they would set a new benchmark the first time they did something. It was just, wow. and I was just like, wow, blown away. And the same bloke on the weekend would go and get a message from the runner saying he says he's exhausted and the game's 10 minutes old. I said, no, he's not. <laughs> and he's just run past him and say, no, you're good, mate. You're going good. Keep going, sir. Oh, and by the way, you've done nothing. <laughs> so you can't. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it was just it was those sorts of things. You know, they just, they just needed to. To believe in themselves, and that's easier to say, but you know, getting you to do that, you know, is, is another thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they were, and they were always going to be, um, you know, as they should be. Like they went to two grand finals just after years afterwards. But like, um, but I was thinking, how many good players? And I know I saw you had you had uh, two or three people there that you said that that we discovered. Um, yeah. But we, yeah. There, was, there was a lot more. In fact, I I had a, had another look at. And um, we didn't have a, the big thing is we didn't have any junior grades. We didn't have a reserve grade, and we didn't have a okay a grade underneath them. So, so I just have to send my promising players, well, the Warriors promising players, over to Brisbane to play in the, in the comp over there. And um, so okay. you send three or four blokes at a time, and so it's just so they got to know some hard football because quite possibly they could be playing first grade the next week for the Warriors if we had an injury, and and, and it happened like that, you know, and sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we'd run out of people in those positions and we'd have to go to the Auckland comp and say, uh, Boise yeah. Nelson was one of the guys that we did. Boise. I remember Boise, Boise Nelson. Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a good footy player. And then, Boise, you're playing, playing uh, for the Warriors this week. Oh, wow. You know? So, uh, yeah, it was... Did you, were... um, did you bring in Carl Doherty that season in 99? He played like four games or something because he was a goal kicker. He had no goal kicker. He was from the Auckland comp. Oh, I think we might have, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll never remember. forget that. I think yeah. he missed all the goals that he kicked though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he missed them all. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you what do you do? You're not going to go out there with twelve, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it was it was it was really hard, but um, you know, some of the the people that we um, we managed to you know play or or, or pick to to play for the Warriors was um, they were they were wonderful, and and you know now finally they're, they're back having a. Reserve grade and I think a SG ball side, so they've they've got places for the talent to, to go, and because yeah. um, you know if you look at the if you look at the stats of every every NRL club side, their top thirty, um, out of their top thirty for each club, fifty percent has got a New Zealand passport. Yeah, it's pretty crazy it's, now. It's, eh? it's, it's it's well, you know, that's where the talent's coming from. You know, because mm-hmm. the the way the game's played, you need big, strong, athletic people that are that are. Um, Willing to do the hard work and, and plenty of Kiwis are like that, you know. So um, yeah, it's um, it was it was um, it was it was kind of scary, to, you know. Like I knew what they would have to do, and, and the kids had no idea what they had to do, and, but their athleticism would get them through. And um, uh, yeah, they were they were, and some of them turned out to be wonderful, wonderful players. And and, and um, when when I left. Um, the Warriors when I resigned because I said I would I'd, I'd got a, um, a job with the Auckland Rugby Union okay. and um, um, there was a the takeover from whoever was taken Tainui went, went out and the new a new guy came in um, with Ridgie and um, so lots of guys left left yeah. just left and, and they went overseas and, and um, um, there was you know lots of lots and lots of players from that group of players that we were Sort of, uh, had a mishmash 
group of players. They went and played overseas, and um, um, good luck to them. And, and, but they never ever played for the Warriors again or, or New Zealand. So, um, but you know, gee, there was some outstanding talent there. I mean, take Shantae and Hoppy. Hoppy, he he was a young winger that we brought up, and he ended up playing okay. for for the Pommies. In, yeah. in uh, rugby union, in rugby union, didn't he? Yeah. And, and now he's back at the Warriors doing. Uh, I think he's maybe doing some marketing thing over there. Yeah. So yeah. Look, like, that, yeah. that's wow. What about that? That's that's out there, you know. Um, yeah, France. France oh, Henry Farfield he played for Samoa Union as well later in his career. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, he was. He was. He was from Manurero, I believe. And um, he's a he's got some sort of boxing. Uh, he runs a boxing gym down in Canberra you know, or some place like that. I think he's over in Tauranga now, like over at the Mount somewhere over there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Mount Montgomery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, and he was the first to win this test. Oh, gee, I can't remember what the test was called. But um, he, um, so the, the guy running the test, he comes to me and he goes, what about that? And I've gone, oh, it's impossible. That, that can't, you know, you've done that wrong. Are you doing that? And I went through all the specifications and he went, yeah. I am. So, so can we do that tomorrow? Because I want to I have a look at that. And he he uh, he he did it again. It was unwritten. It was he just smashed smashed the score. No one in all my time in there. I've had plenty of internationals run that. Wow, unbelievable. And, and yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember there was a game. Uh, Francis Smelly, you picked him like right at the start of his career. Like this has been yeah. one of his first couple of games, I think. Uh, yeah. Against the Sharks, you guys hadn't won for a while in year two thousand. And I remember, I think Matt Spence scored a try. But then this unknown winger, Henry Farfili, I think he bagged a double against the Sharks. And you guys won the game. And it was like, yeah, like, this kid can play. <laughs> like, and well, you plucked I mean, him out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, he, he sort of, he'd, been, he'd been around, you know, and his, his, like, his speed and strength was unbelievable. As, as lots of these guys were. In fact, Clinton Torpy later in his career, they, they wouldn't let him go to the gym because he was getting so big. You know, he was, oh, he was like a, a long, lean... 96 kilos, but he could have been 108 kilos like that, you know, yeah, but he, right. and, and fast. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 yeah, so, was, um, yeah, well, they were remarkable young men and um, um, very yeah. pleased to have spotted them and to have met them and uh, had some, um, um, and put, you know, coached them for a little bit. But um, they, were, they were good people. You think about Ali Laotini, he'd most probably be one of the oh. most talented people that I've ever, ever coached. And he could have, he could have played any. Any sport he liked, he could have been. Yeah, he could have been a world champion at anything he wanted. To be. So um, he was amazing. Oh, he was a freak. He was a freak. Yeah. Does it? Does have you ever thought about the fact that you kind of brought through all these young guys and then you didn't get the accolades of coaching them in the finals? Like they went on to the finals and the grand final the next two years. Does it ever bug you that that happened and that you left? Not really. No, no I was oh, I'm, I'm more, than, more than happy that I um. That I was um, had some part in um, maybe um, selecting them in the first place, you know. But it wasn't that difficult because of all the, all the experience I had in the field. That it, you know, I was just running off what I had, and I knew yeah. what I had was right, you know. So if you could, if you could say, do what, do this to some degree, um, and got got within five percent of the top score, you were going to be something. It was just as simple as that, you know. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of them, there's some of them that had some really arduous uh, family life too that, that, that was, you know, one of them one of them didn't turn up for training I won't say it was one day and um, um, and I used to have this policy of if you were if you were three dollars a room so you know, they'll, they'll deflate because latent's a bad thing as far as I was concerned and um, so if someone didn't turn up there was obviously something wrong you know, and they didn't ring or something like that so it turns up and um, no sorry the cops came to see him and they said, we're, we're, we've got so-and-so. And I said, wow, what, what happened? A mate of mine through the, they'd call me that they knew that he was in trouble with the police. And um, we've arrested him for robbing um, something. And I said, when? I said, Saturday night. I said, shit. Well, Saturday night he was playing for us in Carolina. Oh, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> can't have been in there. I said, no, it can't have been. Said, That's why he was in the training. Yeah. Been arrested that's a, that's a falsely. Terrible. Oh my god, that's terrible! You know, yeah. like, so, and what? Not his fault. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. anyway. But you know, so um, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, no, so it was, um, it was, um, but you know, like, um, the, the, the second year, um, we came to like about second last, I think. Um, yeah, and um, we'd lost, we had um, lots of injuries with Stacey, he was busted, he had a bad wrist, broken wrist. He had a, they left it with a, a bolt sticking out the side of his wrist, which was, um, Horrible, and and the doctor said the doctor said that he can play with that. I said no, he's not playing with that. He's not, you know. But if someone falls on it or or um, yeah. you, know, you know, that's just yeah. not going to happen, mate. You know. That's and Stacey's right. quite keen to play, obviously. And he's a good player, <laughs> really. Yeah, and I was just going, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just having trouble looking at it alone. Like, <laughs> and the doctor's going, no, be, no, it's not not happening. So, um, and I wouldn't have put anybody's career ahead of my coaching career. That's just was just not going to happen. And um, um, so I, so him and him and um, John Simons were you know, half and five eight, and they had maybe seven games together that year, and we yeah. won six of them. So you know that, that's oh. how good they were as a combination. And we yeah. lost our we lost our um, our fullback and Matthew Ridge just like before before the years about a week before the year started, he came in and said I'm not playing anymore. Like, hey. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Oh man. So, um, then your prize yeah, recruit yeah. Ivan Cleary got injured early in the piece and didn't play yeah. all season. Yeah, he yeah. played one game for us or something like that. So yeah, it was yeah. it was just it was mayhem and it was it was really really tough. And um, um, I think of memory, you guys used thirty two players or even maybe a couple more than that that season. You know, yeah. that's a lot. That's that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, look, look, in order to to be successful, you've got to get your best park team on the park all the time. You know? Exactly. And, um, and we just, you know, we went through um, two and a bit teams for the players, you know, different players, you know, and guys that hadn't hadn't played at that level of football. You know, they they athletically were capable, but they needed experience. You know, experience is a big factor, obviously. Yep. And uh, I would try and explain to the to the um, the newspapers that uh, look, we had five new guys out there. It's their first game today, and and um, you know, the old saying, Shinji, Timmy Shinji, to say if you haven't if you played. Haven't played 50 first grade games. You're a rookie, and these guys yeah. hadn't played 10 minutes, you know. And um, yeah. they played the first grade game, and, and they and they were that good. They only made one mistake each, but there was five of them out there, and and they all made one mistake, and we got beat by five tries. And, yeah. and I was saying, yeah, but these guys are these are the future, and they were just looking at me like I was some idiot that fell off the fell off the, the boat. You know? And yeah. uh, I was I was trying to explain to them, but they were just nah, that's horrible, you know. You, and and I said what I said, and I did what I did. That's how it works. Yeah. But you know, yep. some of those. So, so Henry Farfilly, Clinton Torpy, Francis Mellay, Ali Laftiti, Monty Beatham, Shondon Harper, all the fact that we're um, two premierships, um, Waring and Cooper, yep. Odell Daniel, um, I said Clinton, Joey Nalaval, Peter Lewis. Oh, yes. um, you know, these there's multiple um, premiership winners there. Yeah, Henry, 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 Henry. He ended up being a um, a referee. He left and Henry Perinara. Perinara, that's it. Yeah, he was a good player, very good player. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So those are some of the some of the kids that, and even like I left, and then they so the players call me and go, um, should they? They're not. They're not going to renege on their okay. No, like, what? So they said, oh, we need to meet you. We need to meet with you. So these are the players that I've, I've resigned from coaching. Yep. You know, we, we need to, you know, this can't happen. Because, you know, if, if you're getting paid 100 grand, say, you've got most of that spent because that's how you invest it so that, you, you know, you can make money, obviously. You, know, you can have retirement at some stage. So um, um, they would just tore their contracts up because it was New Yorker Morris and then they became New Zealand Morris. So right. they called me and said, um, we need to we need to talk. So, you know, so I, well, I'll come along whether you want to meet. So they well, we met at someone's house and all the boys turned up. And um, so I, we sort of came up with the idea for that. Because um, as a coach, I was, I was, I was, I would chuck people ideas and see what they made of them and, and uh-huh. whether, whether they were going to say, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, what if we did that? And they said, oh, what if we did that? So, so that's how I used to uh, look like, like to coach. Right? And I wasn't, I wasn't a standover man. Um, but anyway, um, so, um, so they'd come up with the idea. It's fine. Right. Like, oh, well, leave it to me. I'll call the um, the paid players association. You know, the the, the union, the paid players, and uh-huh. um, we'll get them to represent you. What's that like? I said, yeah. So I called them and they said, oh, you know, there's not too many of them in the union. I said, okay. So 
how much is it and we'll pay up and stuff like that. And so um, we met the next night and I told them that and they, and they said, yeah, yeah, that's good. And, and, and uh, but I said, you know, the key here is that you've got to all maintain this stance together. You cannot, um, like, so I said to um, one of the, I won't mention his name, but one of the senior players who would be one of the top players said, mate, you've got to maintain, because they're going to come after you and they're going to throw lots of money at you. But these guys are going to stand with you and you've got to stand with them. And um, anyway, he didn't. And they and he called me that night and said, I've oh, signed. I said, what? I was, I was, I was appalled, but that's what happened. And um, But the, everything worked out in the long run. I think the union got involved and it was okay. But it was... Um, yeah, but I was again. I was I was privileged to um, be called by them. Yeah, they were in trouble. So who did they call? They called me. I was. I thought that yeah. was. Yeah, that's so, nice. Yeah, I, I was very. And, and as you know, I um, I see their Facebook pages all the time, and they you know what they're doing, and uh, yeah. thumbs up, and say good day, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, nice. yeah, and, and and going to union was great. I, I really enjoyed my time with union, the union guys. Yep. Um, I got to coach with my um. Uh, cousin um, John Kerman, um, who's like the black sheep of the family because um, he, he he was a rugby league player and then he went to yep. rugby union and he became like a superstar. And um, he did. We, we would have to talk to him at family reunions, but no one liked him after that. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> but he's yeah, he's, so he he went to rugby union, he was super successful and uh, a was top man, great bloke. And um, and so he started coaching and um, he brought me into some coaching, do some coaching for him or with him and teach him how to. Um, tackle and you know, different uh, defensive screens and how to open up defences and create space. Oh. And, yeah, so it was great. I did, did a lot of work with that. Um, I, I was actually asked by John Mitchell, who's the coach of the All Blacks at one stage there, and he asked me to go down to their, one of their um, coaching coaching um, seminars and um, okay. speak different stuff. And um, It was quite funny, actually, because um, he, he was a good coach. He was very thorough. And... Um, um, who talked about just just something really simple. So I was talking about how to carry the football man and how a lot of people carry the football on the balls there, and that, like the teddy bear carry. And you said it happens all the time. And people try to hit the ball and the ball comes out. And it comes out. So I see um, the way to carry the ball is by the point. And you can hook, put it in the crook of your arm. Right. You know, and so, you, so if someone strikes it, it just forces it more into the easy shot. Okay. And the, it, it can't come out. And if you want to pass it, you can just you still pass yeah. it. So I'd, I'd given I'd given that lecture and uh, told a few jokes because that doesn't take a long time, like forty minutes. So that didn't take a long time, but I made it last. And we had a few jokes, but, and he'd walked in, and he hadn't known that I'd just given given that lecture, and so okay. he said uh, he said um, he threw a ball at someone, and um, he said um, I want to show you something, and um, he said grab grab all that footy. So the bloke grabbed the ball, and John hadn't realised that he was he was hitting the ball correctly. And he went to strike the ball to, to get it out, and it couldn't happen. And he looked at me, and I, <laughs> I said, "Yeah, mate." I said, "I've already given that lecture." And he went, "Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> They've all picked up on it." <laughs> so we all have to you won that round. <laughs> yeah, so he, he was a good fellow. But mate, the, the, I, I enjoyed. It. I went up to, uh, you know, um, to coach, help coach Italy in the Six Nations with um, John yeah. Kerwin and uh, Brad Johnson. Um, yeah, he was a head coach up there. Um, and then I came back. To Auckland, and I got approached by um, Kintetsu, which is a Japanese rugby club. They just come out of their right. B grade, and they went to their top top grade. And um, so I, I spent a couple of years. The wife and I and um, my daughter went up there, and uh, we had a great time up there. We the Japanese are wonderful people; they really looked after us. Um, yeah, I, they were, I, could, I can't couldn't say enough thing, good things about the Japanese. There, it's just wonderful. Yeah, so nice. had a great time up there, and. Um, and then uh, I got back to New Zealand and um, it was about time to get a real job. And Lindsay, Lindsay Proctor, a great friend of mine from um, many moons before, he'd um, brought him to management rights over in um, the Gold Coast and he okay. told me all about it. So I did the course and um, brought in to a management rights and um, yeah, I've lived in uh, Australia ever since. Yeah, so it's been good. And there is the end of the career of Mark Graham. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah That's I, amazing, I man. Stuff. I finished up um, um, up in Gladstone here because we were we had uh, management rights had sixty two um, townhouses down on the Gold Coast in, the, in a place called Narang, right, Narang, uh, 
Merrimack, sorry. Um, the biggest kiwi population on the Gold Coast is in Merrimack. Really? And um, we looked after them and we um, rented them out and you know, did the lawns and did the swimming pools and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah. it was good fun, but there was a shooting um, in Woodbeach, just up the road, you know, about 10 minutes up the road. And someone got shot in a car park. And um, okay. uh, our daughter was only a baby at that one, well, just, just going to school. And uh, Jackie, my wife, said, no, it's not, not doing that. It's not, that's not happening anywhere near us. So we sold up and we moved to Gladstone. And Jackie's a Gladstone girl. Okay. And uh, I got, got here and I coached again. You know, how, do you, how do you make friends quickly? You go to a footy yep. club. And so I, yep. I coached the Brothers Club up here for four years. And there was two competitions each year up here. Well, they had the local league and the extended league. And uh, so it was two grand finals a year for four years. And we played in seven of them. And we won... A number of them, and um, and then I retired. So I started working shipwork. Then I'm driving bulldozers, big uh, the biggest bulldozer that Caterpillar makes. So I used to spend my time twelve hour shifts on them. So, yeah, it's good. And I was a I was a senior delegate at at the port for the uh -huh. uh, trade and workers union. So um, wow, it's right up my alley. Yeah, I enjoyed it and uh, worked with great people. It was a great job. We had super um, conditions, and the pay was astronomical. So it was wonderful. That's awesome, man. So um, because we've got to the end of your career, I want to read out a list of accolades that uh, you've been awarded uh, you know, in recent times. So uh, bear with me, everyone, while I read out this extensive list. <laughs> so in August 2006, you were named second row in the North Sydney Bears' Team of the Century. And in 2007, you were named the second row in the New Zealand Kiwis Team of the Century and also further on it as New Zealand's Rugby League Player of the Century. If that's not enough, in Otahuhu, Centenary year, you were named the Otahuhu Rovers Rugby League Team of the Century and Player of the Century, Leopards for Life. You were also named an Auckland Rugby League Immortal. And in 2008, you were also named at second row in a North Devils all-time greatest team. And in July 2018, it was announced that you would be inducted into the Australian Rugby League Hall of Fame. That's pretty incredible, man. I, I know you think it's just people's opinions, but that's a lot of awards with a lot of opinions behind them. I think that... Is a testament yeah. to just how great you were as a player through your career. Well, could I, could I say that you know I've been privileged to play with lots and lots of very good players, and you know in our game, if you don't get the ball when you want it, you know nothing's going to happen. You know, so you you, you you need the people around you. And I was lucky and privileged to play with great players and be coached by great people. And even as a young fellow, you know, mums and dads giving up their time to um, tie up shoelaces for us, and, and, and those are the people that. Um, that, you know, that, that hopefully we honour by going on with our um, uh, yeah. with our careers and, and and the amount of luck and, and blessings we, we we must take from the good Lord to get to where we're going is um I, I've been truly blessed. I, my life's been wonderful. I've had many heartbreaking things that have happened. Obviously, as as it's called life, you know. But, um, but yeah. very pleased, very honoured. Um, but those people that played with me, with me um, certainly. And deserve some of the accolade to and coach me. Nice, nice. I love that you're humble about it. It's just, just it makes you a great person as well as a player. And I think that's awesome. So I'm going to move on to a few fan questions. Um, okay. My best, my best mate Greg. He just wants to say, can you get Mark Graham to say up the wires because that will literally make yeah. his life. Up the wires. Who were great last year? <laughs> I enjoyed watching them last year. They were fabulous. I was and the, the crowd and support was was fantastic. Yeah, man. It was a very good season. It was kind of unexpected too. I didn't really see that one coming. You know? Yeah, well, you know, the, the I suppose the new coach in the it was got some got some pretty good bloody players and Sean Johnson had a great year and, and they they you know they, the game plan sort of suited how they played. Um mm -hmm. and they they didn't get outside the box too often and um you know they defended well and they were resilient. And, and for a change, they got some decent, decent warnings from the referee. You know, there's time and yeah. time and time again, you just go, Oh, you're kidding, aren't you? But this last year wasn't like that, you know. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah, it was, I was, I was, I was very pleased for everyone associated with the club and all the supporters. It was wonderful, and uh, I, I loved it. It was, it was fantastic. That's good, man. Okay, so, uh, Tahi Rehana wants to know, What are your thoughts on the modern game, and have we gone forwards or backwards? Gee, that's a good question. Um, in some regards, you know, I'm, I'm obviously I'm so pleased that people are be able to um, have a ten-year career and never work again. That, that's fantastic. You know? um, yeah. 
I think that's that's wonderful. I see the woman playing rugby league at such a high level and their game is outstanding. I, I think there's lots of things that, um, yeah, you know, the, the game should be a little more unpredictable. Um, it should be a little more exciting. In fact, this, I was um, reading a, a rugby union novel or book or some, something about a, a season and Tony Brown used to coach, he used to play 5-8 for the Highlanders. A very good, oh, yeah. very good five eight, yeah. And then now he's a really good coach, apparently. You know, so I was reading a, an article where he was discussing with, whether he would had been approached by a big um, French rugby union um, organization to go over there and coach. And he had recently seen um, a game, the, the grand final in rugby union for France, and there was like fifty thousand seat stadium. There was seven thousand people there. They was they just kicked the ball. Um, Trying to win the line out, um, get a, earn a penalty, ruck and maul it over, maul it over the try line, or kick goals. And he said, he said in, in in New Zealand rugby union, they won't allow that. So they call all the, all the um, coaches in from all the provincial sides, and, and and it's said to them, if you want to kick it to the corners and go for the line out and maul it over, um, and don't show skill, um, don't don't attract the crowd because of the, the, the skill that your team has. He said we'd rather you lose um, forty to um, 42. So the crowd can go, mate, we, we can turn up. You know, we, we can still, these guys can still win a game. So if you want yeah. to kick it to the corners, we'll make sure you won't get a job. And, and, and Tony Brown was saying that in France, that's very acceptable. Whereas he said, no, he couldn't, he couldn't go to that, do that because that's not fully as he sees it. And I think that the NRL should at some stage start thinking about the entertainment dollar because not everyone's got a lot of it and you either entertained by one sport or another. And if you yep. want to um, attract people, you must give them entertainment. So, and and, and rugby league um, can be a, a wonderful game, but it can be so, you know, like when the opposition kick kick the ball down the other end of the park, I get up to make a cup, and I can say to everyone that's watching the game, okay, who wants a cup? And everyone's going, oh, gee, the game's on storm. I'm going, yeah, but you know what's going to happen. He's going to knock it up. He's going to go and dummy up. He's going to knock it up. And then, it's going to, and then you're going to do this. And everyone knows it's going to happen. So you know, there's there's part in the game where where they they where they, they need to look at, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I think it's, I think it's a great question. I think I think um, the product is is outstanding. The All Blacks are, are so good and and well renowned for their. They play footy. They they might lose, but they're going to play footy, and and that's that's fantastic. You know, that, that's that's given given everyone the best shot. Yeah? So yeah. I I really admire that sort of. Um, I want to see the interchange reduced so that the little men can just carve up the forwards when everyone's tired and bring the bring the points back, you know. Yeah. Like let's see some good tries, some length of the yeah. field stuff like the eighties and nineties. Oh, I miss that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a that's a great point. You know, like um, you know, we have very good players and this is the way the game is, you know, but they, they go out for twenty minutes, they have the next twenty minutes off, they have half time, which is another ten minutes off. They may not go out for the next twenty, but they 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 um, play the last twenty, so they've played forty yeah. minutes. Get paid Fresh. the match fee, um, and, and obviously huge sign-ons, and and they get accredited a whole game. Yeah, you know, like so. So we've got we've got more people that's played three hundred plus games than ever. In my era, there was one guy, and he spent half the time in the backs, and then he came into the forwards. And he's, I've got to say, he's a good player. But um, yeah. to play three hundred games in, in in my era or the seventies. You would have had to stay a long way from the ball for a very long time because you know you couldn't, your body couldn't stand up to it. Not not playing yep. any minutes. So, like imagine Roger Tua versus Sheik in a match where the forwards are so tired at oh. sixty minutes and they have to play the rest of the game. Oh yeah, like just imagine the damage he could do. You know? oh, unbelievable! Yeah, I, 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 he's one of my all-time favorite players. He's yeah, just he was a freak. He's a freak, and he's an athletically gifted. Human being, and um, he's tough and fast, and all the good things. He's a lovely, lovely bloke. I've spoken to him. He's 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 the sort of um, the pinup board for me. He's, he's, a, he's a good. Yeah. But yeah, you're so right, and and that's why you know halves nowadays um, they don't they don't support the ball carrier anymore. You know how many times have you seen someone standing and tackling, trying to get rid of the ball? Well, if that happened in my day, the coach would just you could hear the coach from the sideline screaming at someone, not, "Why aren't you there?" You know? But nowadays they're saying, "No, go to ground. We've we'll got the next play organised. Everyone's already." Got their shape organised for the next play. What about yeah. that one? You know, why didn't you just so catch that one and be at the fullback? You know, 
Yeah. And everyone, everyone nowadays, no one takes, no one gets through the line and, and looks off late. And people are going to say, oh, yeah, but they can defend better. Yeah, I don't know. You know, they run for, you know, they, they run too square. With it. They, should, they should be running a little bit more side on and, and, and using the bumper bars a bit better, you know. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah. anyway, that's some of my opinions anyway. Ah, me too. Which also leads to the next question from Ben Leah. Shout out to you, bud. Um, is so who's your favorite player in the NRL? Is, is that RTS? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, I mean, there's this, don't get me wrong, there's lots of good players in every club. So it's got, you know, uh, most probably a couple of the really good players that I really enjoy watching, but um, he's just um, non stop. And I, I know he went to the All Blacks, he went to Rugby Union and he, and he became an All Black. But then, did he ever play any test matches? I'm not, I'm not sure he, he played matches. a couple off the bench. He didn't okay. really crack it, to be fair, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is fair. Um, uh, um, and that would have been because uh, you talk about stoppages and, 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 like, if you looked at, when I, went to, when I first went to Rugby Union, when I went to coaching, I got all the, all the games that Auckland Rugby Union had ever played uh, for the last 10 years, and I sat there with a stopwatch on, on the video, and I timed how long the ball was in play for. And the longest the ball was ever in play for was three minutes at one time. And that was and that was a kicking duel that lasted two and a half minutes. And I, so I, so I got all the coaching stuff. I got, I got the, the sports um, um, science blokes in and all the conditioning staff, and I said, so what are we what are we making them fit for? And like, the rules here, because I got the rules out too, and I said the rules here state that if a, f- a front rower goes on the ground, the game must stop, and that you must be replaced with another front row. So if someone tries to keep the ball and play against us, if they look like they're going to have a go at our aerobic fitness, um, we just throw one of our front rows on the ground, the game stops, and they and the, and they went, no, no, that's not, you know, we, we need to be able to run three k. I said, no, you don't. They don't run three k. They don't. They don't go anywhere near three k in a game. Yeah. Um. So I so I found it difficult that they. Because they're Fair. huge, they are big, big, big men, and they are powerful yep. and fast. And that, that was my theory: just make them more powerful, bigger, faster, fitter, and strong. You know, a little bit, of, but if you increase their um, speed and their strength and their skill levels, they'd be unstoppable. Because you know, you yep. say, you say, shit, you know, we're we're um, geez, we're doing it tough here. Give it to old mate, and he pumps it down the other end of the park, and you, and you, everyone walks to the line. Do you know how long the balls in play for a good in a good game, a high level game of rugby? In? Oh, I would guess about 50 to 60 minutes at best. Generally, it's about in the in the high 30s. Oh, well, I'm way off. <laughs> and yeah. I rest my case. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the players' fault. That's, just, that's what I'm saying. It's just like, so, um, so Roger is up against people that are, are fully fit the whole time. You know, yep. So they're not gasping for air. They've, they've not just made a tackle and had to run back to position and run back 10 metres and come forward again. They're all just got, they're all standing around going, who's, who's brought the bonus? You know, yeah. you know, what are we doing? You know, what about that good sort in the grandstand? You know, they're not they're not tired. So, um, yeah, but I'm not saying they couldn't be, but I'm just saying that it it, it is played that way. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a big question. Uh, Daz Littlewood and Perry Scarlett both want to know: Do we need another team in the NRL? And how would you feel about a South Island Bears team in 2026? Yeah, well, I, I think um, I, I'd like to. I, I like the idea a great deal. I, I like it a lot. I, I um, I'd say what's the space? I, I believe um, that uh, something may be happening in that regard. It, it suits so much better. Uh, like Papua New Guinea, no one's going to Papua New Guinea. I'm not saying they're not. They'll most probably be the next side in, but um, that no one other than um, people from Papua New Guinea are, are going out there to play. It, it, it's it's just it's um it's a um it's it's a third world country and they're wonderful people all that sort of stuff but it's no one's no one you couldn't shop up there you you couldn't walk down the street up there you you could no. not take your family out you know um so um and and I believe um um Albanese the prime minister of Australia has put six hundred million behind their effort to go into the um um NRL. But the, to me, and that's most really going to happen. But the, the the Bears want to get back in. They've got plenty of support. They've got um, um, huge huge memberships. Um, they've got um, a lots of history, and you know, the colours the red and black. Um, yeah, it's colours. You know, um, yeah. I understand there's a new um, stadium being built down there. 
there across here. Opposite it. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. Yeah, there, there's, and there's only there's only rugby union being played there at this stage. So you know, wouldn't wouldn't hurt to have a game of rugby league. It would solve a few of the NRL problems in that you could have the Pacific, because the Pacific Islands are also um, they're they're a border obviously to um, Australia and and the world's you know um, Chinese aware. So you know that's why the Albanese things they want want um, Papua New Guinea, so that's a, a border for Australia and and the islands, the Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, um, all the islands out there, they they also need to be looked after. So. Um, yeah. You know, you, and if you said, okay, we're going to have a Pacific side and it's coming out of Samoa, well, Tonga and Fiji and all the other islands are going to be upset. And so, if anywhere you put it, they're going to be the jealousy is going to be a problem. But if you put it in Christchurch, it says you can send people up, you can send uh, um, sporting bodies up there, um, is coaches, staff, co- uh, trainers, all that, and, and, and broaden the game up there and, and get some great talent out of there. So, um, yeah, I think it, it ticks a lot of boxes, and it's like three hours, three hours flight from close yeah. to. Yeah, we've got so, an international airport. It's it just yeah. fits. It totally yeah. fits. And you and you yeah. got and you got, you got a you know a, a dedicated sporting community down there that's used to um, success. So you know the Canterbury Crusaders have been successful forever, and um, you know it, it would suit uh, would suit the country most of the talent comes lots and lots of the talent comes out of New Zealand yeah I think it's a win, it's a win for everybody there we go we could get that north south rivalry going that's what we yeah. want yes. it's so good yeah, yeah. move <laughs> over state of origin who cares <laughs> <laughs> all right um Dallas Paul wants to know did you used to have a sneaky halftime cigarette like Cliffy Lyons used to <laughs> Uh, I think in my younger days I may have, um, but not so much in the older days. I used to get have a bunger if I was getting stitched up and I was in the in the um, you know like the doctor's room. You know, might might have a bunger then, but um, um, occasionally I'd get the doorman to um, have one waiting for me as I walk walk down for for half time. But um, yeah, not not so much as I, as I got older. And I've given enough, up smoking. Yeah, give up smoking about ten or twelve years ago. That was actually quite hard to do. So but, I yeah. bet it was. Oh, yeah. Well done, honestly, well done. Um, Raymond Pito wants to know which team in the Fox Memorial Comp made you pumped for a showdown? Oh, gee, there were some good sides when I was playing back then. Um, well, you know, we had you still had Olsen for the Parliament running around um, in Bangor East. Um, Legend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chatterton um, had um, Dennis Williams. Um, Mount Albert had some great players. Um, yeah, they were, you know, they were everywhere in in that sort of the seventies. The Kiwis were all, were playing at home, so you know everyone, yeah. um, every everyone had. We always had a couple of Kiwis at least, you know, maybe more. Um, some of the sides that played in the who had half a dozen. You know, they're, they're, they're good sides, and they were born and bred in Day the Who. You know, but no one, hardly anyone ever um, went and played for another club. You know, it was um, yeah. it was just wasn't done. You were born and bred, and that's that's how it was. You know, I can remember one year we won everything. That was on offer. Preseason, look at Tai, Storm, wow. on, you know, um, Fox, you name it, champion of champions. Um, we beat Cronulla in the game that they were um, Sydney band finalists and they lost in a replay. We played them on the weekend. Um, I don't know who and we beat them. So, yeah, that's, that's good footy, good standard footy. And the, yeah. my winning check for the year was $60. So, um, you yeah, know, <laughs> and we won everything. Um, All that yeah. for sixty bucks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, so I was most pumped for. I mean, oh, gee, uh, Northcote were a great sort. Of there was just too many, too many. But um, I always liked to play um, Ponsby Ponies. They were always nice and tough. And yep. um, Ellerslie, Ellerslie were a great side. Kenny Sterling, Lindsay Proctor, um, Murray E, and Brian Jolly. Yeah, they had, uh, they were a top side too. So, gee, I, awesome. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can point one side out, but that was you'd you'd yeah. like to. If you couldn't play against an opposition and they could, you'd back them because they were, they'd be good. Yeah. Okay, Jerry Flynn. Shout out to you, Jerry. Uh, if there was one player who reminds you of yourself in your playing days, who would it be? Well, I don't know. Never really gave that any thought. Um, no real idea, to tell you the truth. It's a bit different now because, you know, you, um, I'd be a, an edge an edge back row or a... Or a um, uh, middle three um, as I got older, but so you know, like I used to play. I used to, I'd uh, wander around the park 
um, had a good players play in front of me and you know, I'd recognise the fans play the ball and uh, you know, some, some someone in defence missing or offside or injured. And, you know, the big thing I used to play with, I needed the ball when I when I, when I called for the ball. Um, I needed the ball. You know, and uh, if I didn't get the ball when I needed it, the gap was, was close. You know, so um, nowadays, you, like, to be in those positions, you'd have to wait for someone to, to give you the ball, if you know what I mean. So... You know, you've just got a role to play, and um, and yeah, and they're still they're good players. Don't get me wrong, and they're trying to break the line, but most of the time, everybody's read what they're going to do because everyone does pretty much the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it, you know, it's it's uh, you, you know what's going to happen. You know, see the, the the lead runner or the or the bloke behind them, and, and it, that's that's that. You know, so um, it's a bit more difficult, I suppose. It might, it might even be harder, but um, because we you know we played against guys that got tired too. You know, this yeah. old age. That's right. Guys. So it was it was a different it's a completely different game I'd say so. But um there's some very good players out there, obviously. Um I kind of like um um some of the Warriors guys um at the moment. Um yeah, uh yeah, I don't know. Um Sonny Bill Williams, I really liked him. I thought he was a very good player. Um and he he's turned out to be a super athlete and uh, um seems like a really, really nice young man, actually. So I'm a good comment there. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, I think I'd like to be I'd like to be Roger to Avas this year. Awesome. Okay, man, I'm going to finish with a few fun questions of my own. So, who's going to win the NRL in 2024? Let's go with the Warriors. Why not? Beautiful answer. <laughs> awesome. And what's your favourite TV show? I like sports. So I like golf or. Um... Well, NRL programs, um, yeah, I don't really watch television. Other than that. I watch the news occasionally when I'm when I'm training in the mornings. But um, yep. other than that, no. awesome, awesome. And if you were on death row, what would your final meal be? Oh, um, scallops with the roe on, um, black oysters, maybe some raw fish. Um, yep. Yeah. That, yeah, it's about. Don't do me, I reckon. I'd be oh, pretty so happy. Mark Graham loves his seafood. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you can't you can't get them. Well, we have trouble getting scallops with the row on over here. Oh, those scallops are going to be queen scallops too. I got a story. I was uh, I was um was I was coaching with um, the Cowboys, and we we play, actually played in down even. We played a we might have played the Warriors down there. Um, okay. Yeah, would have been late nineties. Latest noise. Anyway, so I, I have to take all the injured to um, to the hospital to get them all checked out. So part of my role. So if I go, I don't go to the after match function. Even the players were getting taken to the hospital. And they all get checked out. They're all okay. So by the time we, everyone gets out, it's like eight o'clock. So I said to the, the, the one of the nurses there, I said, "Oh, it's a really nice place to eat around town. I wouldn't, wouldn't mind getting some seafood." And she pointed me in that direction. So um, she gave me the phone number. I ring them over, book a table for six of us. So then we go. And I'm paying because I've got the, the credit card for the, the Cowboys. So um, yep. I ordered uh, six Queen Scallops, six um, oysters, and a steak and the lob with lobster. Right? So I had the this, this Queen Scallops coming out. They're, they're like this big. You know? So I had six of them, and I was like, oh, jeez. Then, then I ate the, the um, oysters, the bluff oysters, and, and they were, you know, they're big buggers. And then, um, so the, by the time the steak comes out uh, with the with the lobster tail on it, I just I couldn't couldn't even look at the steak. So I just ate the lobster tail, and that was that. I was, I was, I was good. So if I could get that feed again, I'd, um, uh, I'd I'd give it another run for sure. Awesome. And my, and my wife just walked past me and said that I'm your best cook, the banana, and I have to agree. Good man, good man. Get those brownie points in there. <laughs> awesome man well thank you so much for coming on the podcast and going back in the day with me it's been an absolute privilege to meet you and hear about your career mate oh, i'm still pinching myself that i got to talk to you mate it's unbelievable thank you so much mate. i appreciate it and, and look i'm so surprised that the that the rugby league bodies or new zealand rugby league or canterbury or you know whoever doesn't do stuff like this you know look this you know our culture and our our, our stories are passed down from, um, yeah, and that's how their legends or stories are made, and, and that's how culture, you know, the, um, is, the stories are passed down the line, and that's that's the standards are evolved from those those stories. And um, you know, it's, it's disappointing there'll be so many wonderful 
players from previous lifetimes and years that that don't haven't got their story told. So um, I appreciate what you're doing, and I, and I, I urge um, New Zealand Rugby League and um, Can- Canterbury Rugby League to to um, maybe sponsor some some people like yourself to do the job. Oh mate, I really Thank appreciate you. that. Coming from the great Mark Graham, I'll absolutely take that. And yeah, the the whole purpose of this is literally to make sure our legends are remembered. That is, I love rugby league. I'm so <laughs> passionate about it, and it's and that's the drive behind it. I just do it because I love it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, well done, mate. I, I, and look, um, Daryl Williams um, sent me a text. So he did he did a talk with you, a chat with you um, a while back, and he sent uh, on his list of contacts or you know, all the boys. He sent it out saying that you're a good follower and um, um, we should all think about um, having a chat with you. And um, he was dead, dead right, mate. And I'm very pleased to have done it. And uh, hopefully um, um, it goes over good with the audience. Oh, mate, that's amazing. Uh, thanks heaps, uh, Darren Williams. You've been unbelievable. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in uh, with the great Mark Graham. Um, make sure you get on the Facebook group. That's where all the legends are hiding out these days. On Point of Difference Rugby League, uh, Mark Graham's on there, which is just, I still can't believe that. And, um, and uh, you get on the YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you can hear every episode and uh, just listen to the great stories about legends. So we'll leave it at that. And uh, thank you again, Mark Graham. And we'll see you all next time for kickoff. Cheers, mate. Full time.